For writers and public personalities, it's becoming increasingly important to have an online presence. This normally takes the form of a website and social media. However, things like a cluttered site or broken links can scare potential readers away. It's time to get a health check. Until the 30th of June, Black Wolf Editorial Services is offering a special website health check package. Get a new bio for your site. Have the site navigation and general layout assessed. Get a review of your Twitter activities. Get an objective opinion about your public Facebook page. Find out what works well and what could potentially scare your readers away. And all this for $35. At the end of the day, the face we put online will be the one that most people will see. Let us help you put your best foot forward. Black Wolf Editorial Services, nurturing your writing into maturity. For full details and a list of other services, visit us at blackwolfeditorial.com. In these uncertain economic times, you've got to do whatever you can to save money. One of our biggest expenses can be our cars, especially when unexpected repair bills hit. Not anymore. If you own a vehicle with less to than 130,000 miles, can is less save than 12 money. years one of our old, biggest expenses has a warranty can be our about cars, to expire, or especially when no unexpected at all, repair you bills hit. Stop Not paying for anymore. car repairs. If you own a vehicle with less than 130,000 miles, you can is save money. Included. Don't wait for the next repair. Make one free call right now to see if you qualify. If your vehicle is less than 12 years old, has less than 130,000 miles, even if it's out of warranty, paying for car repairs can become a thing of the past. Call us right now and get your car protected before your next repair bill hits. Get protection and no more repair bills. Call 800-696-1030. Again, 800-696-1030. That's 800-696-1030. 800-696-1030. Joe had huge problems with the IRS. I knew it was coming. I hadn't filed taxes since 1990. All the IRS letters coming in added up to a nightmare. They got up to like $68,000. My heart started beating fast. It's like, there's no way, man. I mean, I ain't going to be able to do this. Then they stopped his paycheck. So that's when I started making phone calls and found U.S. Tax Shield. U.S. Tax Shield went to work immediately. They just took the bull by the horns. What blew my mind is he called the IRS right then and there. So why is U.S. Tax Tax Shield A plus rated with the Better Business Bureau? Joe knows. They saved me a ridiculous amount of money. If you owe more than ten thousand dollars to the IRS or state, choose the company Joe chose. U.S. Tax Shield. It was the best decision I made. U.S. Tax Shield is the way to go. Life is good. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> Call eight hundred four seven one thirty two eighty seven. U.S. Tax Shield. Boo raw. Yes. <laughs> 800-471-3287. 800-471-3287. The Internet will never be the same. You're listening to K98talk.com. We believe in the American way, and we built this country called the USA, and we fly our flag because we're proud and free. We're American. Red, white, blue is our way of life Never back down from a challenge or a fight Nature provides, God gives the rights We're Americans We fish the waters and we hunt the lands We force the steel with our own two hands With what we've got, we do the best we can We're Americans It's time now for the Conservative Curmudgeon Radio Show On K98 Talk now, here's Grouchy. Good evening, everybody. Welcome to the Conservative Curmudgeon Radio Show. I am your friendly neighborhood Grouch. Glad to have you here with me. And I got to tell you, I'm going to try to do this 60-minute show in about 30 minutes and make it last an hour. So bear with me as we go through this. Uh, I have to get up in about six hours and hit the road for a 640 mile road trip, unload my payload in the truck, turn around and drive the 640 miles back home so I can get some sleep to be ready to go Friday morning. So anyway, enough of my problems. Uh, tonight, this whole show is about money. That's right. Your money, my money, tax money. 
The government takes our money and wastes it in ways that you cannot believe. But before we get there, we're going to touch on another huge waste of our money. I know it sounds redundant and repetitive and all that good stuff, like I'm repeating myself. But um, trust me, it's a little different here. So, you know, we've got this we've got this monstrosity of a problem in this country called immigration right now. It's a huge problem, and we're not even going to pretend it's not. And we're going to discuss how huge it is in just a couple more minutes. But as if our immigration crisis wasn't dire enough, we have a number of illegal aliens that are using fake. Puerto Rican birth certificates to obtain authentic U.S. passports and driver's license. Now, I know some of you, you know roughly where Puerto Rico is. You know, it's an island. It's an island nation. It's about a thousand miles southeast of Florida. Became a U.S. territory a couple decades back after the Caribbean island was acquired from Spain at the end of the Spanish-American War. Did I say decades? How about centuries? <laughs> Feels like centuries anyway. But you see, Puerto Ricans are American citizens at birth, but they don't have the right to vote in federal elections. And the island has only one non-voting representative in Congress. Now, in recent years, a record number of Puerto Ricans have left their troubled island for the U.S., and a huge chunk have settled in Florida. Now, those of you that might be in New York are screaming, hey, what about us? Yeah, I know. There's some Puerto Ricans in New York, too. There's Puerto Ricans everywhere. And you know what? Most all of them are very good, decent, hardworking people. That is true. But a few months ago, a study found that the island's ongoing economic recession has led to a mass exodus of people not seen in more than five decades. In 2014 alone, 84,000 people left Puerto Rico for the U.S. mainland. A recent news report referred to the Puerto Rican crisis as an economic exodus that would push two-thirds of its population to live in the U.S., the island nation has an eye-popping $73 billion debt, a collapsing health care system, and nearly half of its population is living in poverty. Well, damn, doesn't that sound familiar? Well, all except for the $73 billion debt, uh, you know, we got a lot more than that here. But for the rest of it, collapsing health care, half the population in poverty, that's the United States. Are we sure their one non-voting member doesn't get a vote for everybody in Congress? Anyway, it's fair to say that for years, Uncle Sam has welcomed Puerto Ricans with open arms, and that has created lots of opportunities for fraud. There's been a rise in the number of cases involving the use of false Puerto Rican birth certificates by illegal immigrants, according to a South Florida newspaper. And it focuses on the specifics of a recent case. It involves an illegal alien from Colombia arrested in Florida after trying to get a U.S. passport by claiming to be an American citizen born in Puerto Rico. Now, this man used a fake Puerto Rican birth certificate to get a valid driver's license from the state of Florida more than three years ago. The newspaper article points out that this case is the latest in a series involving the use of fake Puerto Rican birth certificates by illegal immigrants in South Florida. In the last year alone, more than 12 cases have surfaced in Miami federal court. The defendants, all Spanish-speaking illegal aliens, have all illegally obtained Puerto Rican birth certificates to get American passports or driver's licenses. Now, this latest case, uh, the man's last name is Sanchez, uh, he's been criminally charged and is scheduled to be tried this month at a Broward County federal court. It turns out that fraud involving these Puerto Rican birth certificates has been 
you know, and it's been pretty prolific for years. And the U.S. government and its various agencies accept the documents blindly. You know, they don't do any background checking. They just assume that if you have this, you're good. The problem got so out of control that back in 2010, Puerto Rico's government invalidated every birth certificate and issued new ones considered to be safer. Now, how bad does that have to be when they obliterate everybody in their nation's birth certificate to create this new safe one? I don't know if it has a watermark or a, a magnetic strip or the special ink like our currency. Uh, yeah, I don't know what they did to them, but I, I would love to find out. So anyway, um, you know, this is a pretty radical solution, uh, but many say it's a long time coming and has been a serious and growing crisis involving Puerto Rican birth certificates, which are used to apply from everything from U.S. passports to Medicaid to food stamps to driver's licenses, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Now, that same report, published in April 2010, revealed that the U.S. State Department was well aware of the problem. Go figure. <laughs> Who was running the State Department in 2010? Remind me again. Oh, that's right, Hillary Clinton. Yeah. Um, I'm sure that she didn't know anything about this until she read it in the paper, kind of like Obama, you know. He doesn't know what his administration's doing until he reads about it or sees it on the news. But it was estimated that the agency um, back then, they mind-boggling 40% of all U.S. passport fraud cases involved Puerto Rican birth certificates. Four years later, a separate report confirmed that little had changed and that the fraud is still rampant. Now, you know, I don't get it. When, when they know that there's a counterfeit, altered, or stolen birth certificate coming from Puerto Rico and that they view this as the holy grail to Florida's undocumented illegals. With phony birth certificates, you can live the American dream, enroll in a school, land a job, get a driver's license, qualify for thousands upon thousands of dollars in earned income credit refunds from our government that you and I pay for, cha-ching. Why wouldn't state do something about this? And, and let's not just pin it all on Hillary and not even let's just not pin it all on John Kerry because this problem has been ongoing for decades. OK, we can we can literally draw this line back to the 70s. Now, granted. In recent years, it has ramped up tremendously and something does need to be done to curtail it. But really, you think that's going to happen with this administration? So knowing that this is happening and knowing that you and I are footing the bill for it, let's take a quick run over the annual cost of illegal immigration at the federal, state, and local levels. Okay? Because what we've got here is a $113 billion a year problem. Yeah, you heard me right. $113 billion. It makes that $1.5 billion Powerball lottery sound like a booger, doesn't it? But this is what illegal aliens cost you and I as taxpayers. And what that works out to is $29 billion at the federal level and $84 billion at the state and local levels. Now, this study also estimates tax collections from illegal alien workers, both those in the above ground economy and those in the underground economy. Those receipts do not come close to the level of expenditures 
and in any case are misleading as an offset because over time, unemployed and underemployed U.S. workers would replace illegal alien workers. So, the key findings in this study of what illegal immigration is costing us. <laughs> the annual outlay that illegal aliens cost U.S. taxpayers is an average amount per native-headed household. Okay, so if you're an American citizen, your house pays roughly $1,117 per year, per year, to support illegal aliens in our country. Education for the children of illegal aliens constitutes the single largest cost to taxpayers at an annual price tag of near $52 billion. Dollars. Nearly all of those costs are absorbed by state and local governments. Let that sink in. State and local governments. Well, no wonder the federal government isn't motivated to do anything about this. Oh, look at that. Out of $113 billion a year, $52 billion are directly absorbed by state and local governments. The feds don't care. At the federal level, about one third of outlays are matched by tax collections from illegal aliens. Now what that means is out of their $29 billion, what they're saying is that they get about uh, two, four, six, seven, eight point seven billion in taxes from the illegals. So they consider that okay, I guess, you know, they have a, yeah, you know, a 5% plus or minus is what they're saying. That's a pretty big plus or minus when you're talking billions of dollars. But, okay, let's just not split hairs. We'll say they, let's say they're right, and one third of it is recouped. So that means the federal government is paying out $20 billion. Well, guess what? They still get that $20 billion from you and me. They take that money from our paychecks. They take that money from our wallets. That's money that you and I don't get to spend because they're busy trying to create some kind of developing world within our country and have some kind of multicultural utopian de uh, democratic because they're busy dream. trying to most illegal aliens do not pay income taxes among those who do much of the revenues collected are refunded to the illegal aliens when they file most tax illegal returns. aliens why in the hell would we do this many are also claiming tax credits resulting in payments from the United States Treasury. Again, your money and my money. This we can pin squarely on the shoulders of Barack Obama. With many state budgets in deficit, policymakers have an obligation to look for ways to reduce the fiscal burden of illegal immigration. Just the state of California alone is facing a budget deficit of $14.4 billion and is hit with an estimated $21.8 billion in annual expenditures on illegal aliens. Are you kidding me? That's, they're paying 30% more than their deficit in expenditures on illegal aliens, where if they simply just cut off expenditures for illegal aliens, they would suddenly be, oh, uh, what, $7.4 billion in the black. How about that? That's how easy it is to balance your budget out, California. Do you have the stones to do it? I know you don't. 
New York has a $6.8 billion deficit. And uh, it's smaller than its $9.5 billion in annual illegal alien costs. Again, they could balance out, have a $3 billion surplus if they simply cut out the expenditures on illegals. Folks, I don't know about you. I mean, I feel that our states owe us the balanced budget. And if it, as, and if it comes at the expense of not servicing people that are in our country illegally, I'm all for it. I think the first thing that should happen is that all incentives for illegal aliens to remain in the United States should be revoked. You either make it on your own by being a contributing member of society and come in the legal way, or get the hell out. Now, this report also notes that while tax collections from the illegal alien population would likely increase only marginally, the new legal status would make them eligible for receiving Social Security retirement benefits that would further jeopardize the future of the already shaky system. An amnesty would also result in this large population of illegal aliens becoming eligible for numerous social assistance programs available for low-income populations for which they are now not eligible. The overall result would therefore be an accentuation of the already enormous fiscal burden. Okay, now let's think about this. Let's think about this long and hard for a minute, okay? As a Hispanic person myself, I don't care what your nationality is. I don't care what color your skin is. I don't care where you came here from. I don't care if you're black, white, red, yellow, brown, purple, pink, blue, or even plaid. I simply don't care. Your race has nothing to do with this. Your religion has nothing to do with this. Your skin color has nothing to do with this. You're breaking the law. These laws were put in place for a reason. They were put in place to protect American citizens, not just from terrorists. I know that's big on everybody's mind right now, but this is not just a terrorism thing. It is put here, those laws were made to protect us from being overrun by multiculturalism. They were put in place so that we could properly screen the people that were requesting to come to the United States to make sure that they were good, hardworking, intelligent people that were ready to go assimilate into our culture and contribute to our nation. We're not supposed to be throwing damn turnstiles up at the southern border. That's not a secure way of controlling immigration, Mr. President, which is what you have done. I just want the law followed. And that shouldn't be too much to ask from people that run for public office and swear an oath to uphold our laws. But apparently it is. Apparently it's a little too much. Now, we're about to move on to the next segment, but before we do, I want to remind you that uh, tonight's all about the money. Your money, my money, tax money. The money our government takes from us and pisses away. And we're going to talk about exactly how they piss it away. We have some of these are long discussions. Some of these are not so long discussions. But we're going to talk about them. The one thing that really jumped out, and, and by the way, 
Um, if you're not familiar with the uh, annual waste book that comes out of Congress, this is a tradition that was started by now retired Senator uh, Tom Coburn. And those of you from the uh, middle of the country, you know who Tom Coburn is well, Nebraska man. Uh, Tom Coburn put this out every year, what he considered the hugest waste of taxpayer dollars. And he did this to raise awareness. And unfortunately, a lot of people turned it into kind of a joke. Oh, look at the look at the pasty old white Republican stuff shirt, uh, racist bigot over there, honky, whatever you want to call them. It doesn't matter. They turned it into a joke. Coburn was doing something good and decent, something that every one of the 535 elected idiots in Washington, D.C. that congregate in that Capitol building to pass laws should be paying attention to, but they don't. Now, like I've mentioned, Coburn is retired now. So who did the waste book? Well, of, of all people, of all people to pick up and start doing waste book on the Republican side of the house, Arizona junior Senator Jeff Flake. Yeah, that's an affirmative, Mr. Producer. Oh, my apologies. Was Tom from Oklahoma? Oh, God, did I? And I said Nebraska. Wow. Okay. Pardon me, folks. Senator Coburn from Oklahoma. Pardon me. I can't believe I said Nebraska. Wow. That's what happens when I don't reference my notes often enough. But anyway, uh, of all people, Jeff Flake, that's right, the guy that um, the guy that was on the Gang of Eight, yeah, he was the other junior senator with Marco Rubio, the other junior Tea Party brander. Uh, Jeff Flake was supposed to be one of the hottest up-and-coming young senators that was going to Tea Party this country back into its place. Jeff Flake flopped as hard as Rubio, but didn't take as much heat for it on the Gang of Eight. And I guess this is Flake's way of trying to work his way back into favor. I guess he figures if Rubio can do it, so can he. So let's give Jeff, and, and, and again, if you would like to go over this in much more detail, I highly recommend that you go to www.flake.senate.com dot gov and just do a search for waste book you are going to love the format that he did this in and i'm not going to spoil it for you i'm just going to say you will absolutely love it now the number one thing in the waste book that caught my eye is titled paid patriotism you may have heard about this story about how the department of defense has been paying organizations like the NFL, Major League Baseball, the NBA, the NHL, Major League Soccer, to have patriotic displays at their games. Why? Why would the Department of Defense do this? These paid tributes included on-field color guards, enlistment and re-enlistment ceremonies, performances of the national anthem, full field flag details, ceremonial first pitches, puck drops, penalty kicks. DOD even paid for the opportunity to perform surprise welcome home events for troops returning from deployments and to recognize wounded DOD warriors. DOD even paid for mm, the... Pardon me. Very well-intentioned. Don't get me wrong. I love our men and women in the military every single day. 
being a veteran myself, I understand what they were trying to accomplish. Being a taxpayer, it offends the hell out of me. Okay. Now, before we get into the, the hard numbers of this thing, Mr. Producer, I know we're about a minute or two ahead of schedule here, but uh, we are coming up on the bottom of the hour. So could we go ahead and cue the break up? And that way I could just do the whole waste book after the break and, and just carry it straight on through to the end. You, you ready for me, Mr. Producer? Got you covered. One sec. All right. He's queuing them up. Folks, we are going to take a break. And when we do come back, we're going to uh, go ahead and go through the waste book. Uh, there's probably about 20 items that I'd really like to hit on in this thing. It's much bigger than 20 items, but there's 20 that I really want to hit on. So we're going to be cooking when we come back through this. Stay tuned, though, and we're going to cover these billions and billions of dollars our government's wasting. Go ahead and play it, Mr. Producer. We're good. I'll send that. Something to see, baby. Ain't that America? Home on the free, yeah. We will never fully understand what we've asked of our military service members or their families, asking them to put themselves in harm's way, to endure it all. But we do understand that it's our turn, our duty, to keep them secure for the rest of their lives. Wounded Warrior Project long-term support programs help our most severely ill or injured veterans live independently, at no cost for life, so that they might stand at ease. Join us at findwwp.org. If you want to work until you keel over, have less of everything in retirement, or give back more of your hard-earned money to the stock market again, then just ignore me. But if you'd like to protect the money you save, receive a steady, predictable retirement income, and enjoy financial security for as long as you live, then listen to this. You can download a free report that reveals the wealth-building secrets Wall Street and the banks don't want you to know. You'll learn how you can get guaranteed growth, safety, and real prosperity without risking your money in the Wall Street casino and how to get the money you need when you need it simply by asking for it. This is the best way to have a 100% secure retirement and know your money will last as long as you do. To learn more about this method and to get your free report, go to 29security.com. That's the number 29security.com. 29security.com. Go to 29security.com. All right, guys, we're ready for our four season sunroom, and Daddy's gonna get a rec room with refreshments. Oh no, we'll be sleeping under the stars. Mom, what about the one with, you know, the fun? Nice try, little bro. It's a gym. My gym. Hey, Grandma's getting her Four Seasons garden room. Weather tight and still like being outdoors. Maybe a living room. Oh no, wait, a family hub. Yeah! yeah. No matter what the budget, the season, or the climate, Four Seasons Sunrooms let you and your family enjoy the outdoors inside. Call now to receive your free, no-obligation brochure from the premier manufacturer of sunrooms since 1975. More reasons for four seasons now. To find out more, call toll-free 800-928-7007. That's 800-928-7007. Call 800-928-7007 today. The Internet will never be the same. You're listening to K98talk.com. We will never fully understand what we've asked of our military service members or their families, asking them to put themselves in harm's way, to endure it all. But we do understand that it's our turn, our duty, to keep them secure for the rest of their lives. Wounded Warrior Project long-term support programs help our most severely ill or injured veterans live independently, at no cost for life, so that they might stand at ease. Join us at findwwp.org. Oh, 
welcome back. Glad to have you here. All right. Now, when we left off, we were about to get into Wastebook 2015. It is important to remember before we get started here, if you have a uh, nice picture of President Ronald Reagan uh, out on display, you might want to put it in a drawer for this segment of the show. Uh, because he would be rolling in his grave to know that a Republican-run Congress is responsible for this expenditure. Okay, I warned you. Uh, if you also have financially sensitive ears, you may want to uh, maybe not engage in this part of the show, uh, because I'm going to break wallets all over the place here. So, the Department of Defense... All in all, the military services reported spending $53 million on marketing and advertising contracts with professional sports teams between 2012 and 2015. More than $10 million of that total was paid to teams in the National Football League, Major League Baseball, National Basketball Association, National Hockey League, and Major League Soccer. DOD cannot fully account for the total cost, but displays of paid patriotism were contained within sports marketing contracts totaling at least $6.8 million per year since 2012. Okay, now hang on. That's 2012, 2013, 2014, 2015. Six times four is 24. Eight times four is 32. That's $27.2 million. That's only half of the $53 million that they mentioned in the first paragraph. Where's the other half of the money? Whose pockets did that money make it into? Now, the department claims these contracts are intended for recruitment purposes but does not uniformly measure <clears throat> whether these activities are actually contributing to recruiting goals. There's a good old military standard for you, right? So in 2015, the uh, paid patriotism included a United States Air Force contract with NASCAR totaling $1.6 million that included autograph sessions with uh, Eric Almarola at an Air Force recruiting booth Meet and greets and other appearances by Richard Petty and 20 Richard Petty driving experience ride-alongs. Uh, as part of a $150,000 contract with the NFL's Atlanta Falcons, the Georgia Army National Guard Color Guard participated in a military appreciation game and also attended a training camp, which included the giveaway of co-branded promotional items such as hats, flags, rally towels, etc., etc., for 500 attendees. The Georgia Army National Guard also had a $150,000 contract with the Atlanta Braves baseball team that included sponsorship of four military appreciation games. The Minnesota Army National Guard paid $100,000 to the NHL's Minnesota Wild for a contract that included a color guard ceremony and opportunity for a soldier to rappel from the catwalk to deliver the game puck, recognition of a soldier of the game and a flag bearer highlighted on the center scoreboard at every regular season and postseason wild home game. And it goes on and on and on and on. Seattle Sounders of the Major League Soccer had a $35,000 contract with the Washington Army National Guard. $75,000 contract, Utah Army National Guard for Major League Soccer's Real Salt Lake included color guard ceremonies and military appreciation nights. Folks, if these professional sports teams are truly, truly interested in showing patriotism. Why do they have to be paid to do it? They're already um, <clears throat> making money hand over fist. Um, just, just to give you an idea, the NFL last year made a $12 billion 
billion with a B, $12 billion profit. That, that's after meeting <laughs> their payroll. Have you seen what pro football players make these days? I don't even know what the whole payroll of the NFL is, but I promise you one thing, I'm going to find out. I am going to find out. It might take me a couple of weeks to get all the math done, but I am going to find out what 30 NFL teams' payroll is for a year and compare that to their profit. So anyway, like all Americans, we appreciate our military. We love our military men and women. We love what they do in defending our freedoms. I do not love what the Department of Defense is doing with our tax dollars. I think that these professional sports organizations should step up and show their patriotism. Volunteer like the men and women you're honoring. Next up, not nearly as lucrative, but way more ludicrous. The, uh, the expose article that was done on this uh, was called Take the Monkey and Run. It's kind of a play off the old Steve Miller song, Take the Money and Run. For those of you younger that don't know that song, you should look it up. It's, it's actually a pretty good little song. But this is Take the Monkey and Run. So this is how the Southwest National Primate Research Center trained 12 marmoset monkeys to run on a treadmill via a $1 million grant from the National Institute of Health. Now, each of the 12 little monkeys was put into a transparent rodent exercise ball. The balls of monkeys were then placed onto a standard human Nordic track treadmill. The treadmill was started at a low speed and gradually increased to one mile per hour. The scientists were amazed at how the monkeys acclimated to running in the exercise ball on the treadmill. But they say there were some spills and mishaps along the way, including one who vomited inside his exercise ball and three others who defecated in theirs. Another monkey in the treadmill running group also died 11 weeks into the study, but they say it wasn't related to what he was doing in the study, so it must be okay then, right? Come on. We're talking monkeys inside of plastic balls on treadmills. And they got a million dollars to do this. Why did they get a million dollars to do this? Well, they point out that the main potential limitation with exercise training and testing is time. It's a process that's labor intensive, they say. We worked with each marmoset five days a week for one month, habituating and training to the capture and exercise paradigms. Maintaining the exercise then occurred three days each week for three months. So what was it they were actually studying? What did they find? <laughs> uh, the researchers say that the studies of monkeys running on treadmills can be conducted for more meaningful purposes Specifically, they assert that these techniques should be useful to researchers wishing to address physiological responses of exercise in a marmoset model. Why would they want to know how forced exercise affects a wild creature? You shouldn't be doing this to them. And, and look, here's, here we go already. The National Institute of Aging, which is also uh, NIH funded, is getting ready to spend 600000 plus to conduct its own monkey on a treadmill study. Unbelievable. 
This is your tax dollars and my tax dollars hard at work. Now, over the past decade, this Southwest National Primate Research Center located in Texas has received nearly 70 million taxpayer dollars in grants and contracts from various federal agencies. And during this same time period, the center has also been slapped with fines totaling more than $30,000 for a number of violations, including performing a necropsy on a baboon that was still alive. Unbelievable. USDA has identified 14 violations of the Animal Welfare Act at the center over a two-year period. We're funding this, folks, with our tax dollars. Unbelievable. Okay, moving on. One of the other things I wanted to get to. Now, <laughs> we all know that the uh, Middle East is a veritable hotspot for tourism. But um, the United States State Department issued a travel warning in May of 2015 urging Americans to avoid all travel to Lebanon because of ongoing safety and security concerns. That's a quote from the State Department. U.S. citizens have been killed in bombings and kidnapped within the Middle Eastern nation in recent years and months. ISIS terrorists have staged attacks along the nation's eastern border with Syria, and there are tensions along its southern border with Israel as well. Sudden outbreaks of violence can occur at any time in Lebanon, including attacks by suicide bombers, according to the State Department. Islamic State sleeper cells are also believed to be hidden within Lebanon. Now think about this, okay? They put this warning out with all these dire consequences and, and cautions, and despite the risk to U.S. citizens, the United States Agency for International Development spent more than $2 million promoting tourism from the United States to Lebanon. Hello? In a perfect case of the left hand not knowing what the right hand is doing, because both of them are in a place that most government workers' heads are, you said is funding two five-year programs, uh, Lebanon Industry Value Chain Development and Building Alliance for Local Advancement, Development and Investment. Um, now, through the latter, you said has provided $1.6 million for rural tourism related to activities since 2012 and expects to invest $1.3 million this year. What the hell are they thinking? This is your money, my money. Stop! Call your congressman, put their feet to the fire. This kind of garbage has to come to an end. Next up, hipster parties. Oh, yeah, you heard me. The National Institute of Health funding $5 million for this slogan. Will you be there to help a hipster in need? That's the question posed by the Help a Hipster movement that has received $5 million of taxpayer funds from NIH. They organize parties at bars and nightclubs featuring indie rock bands, local artists, and DJs, as well as other activities aimed at enticing hipsters to take a stand against tobacco corporations. And when parties fail to achieve that goal, the intervention gets blunt. And the organizers of these parties, the Help a Hipster movement, start handing your and my cash to these hipsters. They offer them cash to quit smoking. 
Are you kidding me? They're paying people our money to promise to quit smoking. So, yes, I'll quit smoking. Thank you for the cash. I'm going to give you this pack of cigarettes that I have, and I'm going home to start my smoke-free life. And he gets in his car, drives off, stops at the corner store, picks up a new pack, and goes home and burns them down that night. How stupid can you be? Okay. So next up, Washington State National Science Foundation. Woohoo! You're going to love this one. Can a foam koozie keep a can of cold beer cool on a hot day? Are you serious? A $1.3 million study for this? I could do this for the cost of two beers and, a, and one koozie. And it's scientific. So... Two researchers and a pair of students from the University of Washington investigated the question with funding from the National Science Foundation, discovered exactly how a koozie keeps a cold can of beer cool. Probably the most important thing a beer koozie does is not simply insulate the can, but it keeps condensation from forming on the outside of it. Everybody all together, duh. The koozie is essential. Do not just wipe off the drops of condensation, warns the science writer in UW's news office. That will only make your drink even warmer. Warming results when droplets of condensation form on a cold can or bottle. By preventing condensation from occurring, the koozie keeps the beverage from becoming warm. We paid $1.3 million, you and I did, to find this out. Unfreaking believable. Moving on. New York Institute of Drug Abuse. That's right. The New York Institute of Drug Abuse. Sounds like a really high end uh, treatment facility, maybe. Um, they were awarded $780,000 in grant money um, to study addictive foods or what they consider addictive foods pizza may be as addictive as crack according to their study uh, it appears that after all college students eat pizza for breakfast lunch and dinner or in between meals or as a late night snack and they are not alone pizza is the world's most popular food, declares the United States Department of Agriculture. One in eight Americans eats pizza on any given day. Oh my God. For the NIDA study, more than 100 undergraduate college students at the University of Michigan completed a survey indicating which of 35 foods they associated with addictive-like eating behaviors. The students who participated were paid $20 and received course credit. What a deal. Students at other colleges will experience pizza envy since their schools probably don't offer similar rewards for being graded on their food addiction. When the results were tallied, chocolate ice cream, uh, french fries were rated as even more addictive than pizza for most students. So, yeah, maybe not so good with this study. But anyway, we paid for it. We might as well know. Next up, oh, the party bus. National Department of Homeland Security. Oh, yeah, that's right. You heard me right. DHS, baby. Entertainment buses chartered for bachelor and bachelorette parties and luxury motor coaches chauffeuring the affluent to the playground of the rich and famous are taking taxpayers for a ride by picking up federal homeland security funds. The Intercity Bus Security Grant Program provides funding to owners and operators of fixed route intercity and charter buses 
that serves select areas designated for urban area security initiative funding by the Department of Homeland Security. Isn't that special? The program allocated $3 million this year, and the recipients may spend the money on operating costs, public awareness campaigns, or renovations to buses and bus terminals intended to enhance security. So let me get this right. If I run a bus company, a private company, and I take out a contract with DHS that says, in times of emergencies, I will come to your aid with my company's resources. You're just going to funnel money to me like this. This is crap. Absolute crap. So these people are getting $3 million a year to build custom coaches, buses, and limos so that they can chauffeur around DHS personnel or even possibly civilians in the time of a dire emergency if and when DHS calls them and says, we need you. Isn't that nice? You're paying for that. I'm paying for that. Think we can get a free ride on that bus? Think that limo will come to your house and pick you up and take you and the missus out for dinner? Or you and the mister out for dinner? I don't think so. But we're paying for it in more ways than one, too. Oh, I can't even do this one. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, okay. NASA in Colorado is doing a study on the effect of sheep in zero gravity. That's right. You heard it. Sheep in zero gravity. I don't even know if I have a sound effect for that. I, I just, uh, well, how about this one maybe? Yeah, that's right. The old flushing toilet. Or, oh, maybe this one. Yeah, exactly. So they're not planning to launch sheep into space. But they have rounded up a herd of sheep, and they plan to mimic the impact of space travel on their bones to better understand bone health and healing. This is a three-year project that's going to cost you and I $1.2 million. Peachy. Sheep in space. All right, moving on. Um, here's one that really will tick you off. And if it doesn't, your head's not in the right place. Hello? <laughs> that was not me, folks. Um, anyway. Yes. <laughs> yeah that's enough that's enough really okay let's get this one in because it'll probably be the last one it's a little big uh compared to some of the others housing and urban development you know what a wreck this is uh this is the uh cabinet position i believe uh Julian Castro runs this department for Obama. Anyway, uh, some residents of public housing intended for low-income families own real estate and are even earning big bucks from rental properties of their own. A Nebraska resident receiving federal housing subsidies, for example, owns real estate valued at $470,600 has assets totaling $1.6 million and earns an annual income 
nearly double the financial threshold to be eligible for the Department of Housing and Urban Development's housing program. Over 300,000 families are on a waiting list to receive housing assistance just in New York City, which has been ranked the second most expensive city to rent in in America. While household income must be less than $67,000 to be eligible for rental assistance. Wait a minute, $67,000? I guess it is New York. Anyway, for rental assistance, a four-person household with a combined income of nearly half a million dollars has been receiving public housing despite exceeding the income eligibility since 2009. One of the members of the household owned real estate that produced $800,000 in rental income alone over a four year period. It's all legal and it's not even that unusual. But how is it legal? More than 25,000 households had incomes exceeding HUD's eligibility limits in July of 2014, according to an audit. More than 1,000 households had incomes exceeding the qualifying limit by as much as $50,000 or more. Despite that fact, hundreds of thousands of lower income families are on waiting lists for housing assistance. HUD defends the policy of subsidizing the rents of tenants earning higher incomes. As a result, HUD did not assist many low-income families in need of housing as it could have. HUD will pay $104.4 million over the next year for public housing units occupied by people that exceed the limitations of what HUD is supposed to subsidize. That is you and me paying $104.4 million for people to live high on the hog that are already making high on the hog salaries. And people wonder why Poor people get upset and feel disenfranchised like the government's not helping them. Hey, guess what? Poor people, this is your government. These are the people you voted for that are screwing you over. It's time to put the parties aside. It's time to vote on issues and not how your candidate looks or how your candidate sounds. It's time to put the foolishness away. Now, folks, it's top of the hour. I've wound my time up. I want to thank you for being here. We're going to do this again uh, in two weeks next week. Well, no, we're going to do it next week. We're going to do it next week. We are. We're going to do it next week. Um, so come back next Wednesday night. And if you like the show, tell your friends. If your friends like the show, you probably need some new friends, but I hope you and they will come back next Wednesday for the very next conservative curmudgeon radio show. Thank you. God bless. Catch me on Twitter at TCC underscore grouchy. Love you. Mean it. Bye. We believe in the American way and we built this country called the USA and we fly our flag because we're proud and free. We're Americans. Red, white, and blue is our way of life. You're listening to the Spark Radio Network, internet radio like you've never heard before. Innovation, creativity, and imagination are all said to begin with a spark. So fasten your seatbelt and take the ride of your life and listen for the spark. The leader in talk radio on the internet, right here on K98talk.com. I'm in Wind's World, and I love it. Wind's World? What the heck is that? For me, it almost tastes like a watermelon Jolly Rancher on the back end. Oh, yeah. You like those watermelon Jolly Ranchers back in the day? That's right. The big question is, be why do some people act so impulsively? 
oh my God, is my husband going to lose his member? I, I mean, he can't function without his Jimmy. Come on. I think something good is going to happen. People don't notice, but The Rock had breast surgery. They're literally talking about getting rid of due process. For proving to scientist skeptics, this agent beyond space and time must be a personal being. Welcome to Wen's World. Here we go. We're getting boozy with the beer guy, Aaron, and the Wens, right here in Wen's World. We are back and getting boozy with the beer guy, Aaron. Hey, how you doing? Yeah, at beer guy Aaron on the Twitter sphere. That's me. And of course, him and his partner, Tim Dennis, rocking and a rolling every Saturday afternoon, 1 p.m. on AM 920 The Answer, Beer Guys Radio, and of course, on demand at beerguysradio.com. So it is summer. It is. And I am sweating. Uh, Are we all? It's brutal out there. I think summer came about six weeks early here, but of course it is Georgia. So that's uh, that's what happens. As I sit by the pool and let my under boob sweat collect, I'm wondering what the best kind of summer beer is and what makes a good summer beer in your opinion. All right. You know, I mean, everyone has their own different opinions, but for me, it's got to be light. It's got to be refreshing. It's got to be fairly low in alcohol. So a low ABV. I'm talking about four to five percent so I can have more than one. So, you know, we're talking about uh, uh, definitely not like a big porter, a big stout, a big double IPA. That's something that really is not going to quench my thirst, especially in the heat of summer by the pool. Right. You want something a little bit on the refreshing and light side. And I've got the perfect beer for you that you have probably never heard of. Oh, do tell. It's called a Goza. Goza. Goza, exactly. It's actually it's spelled G O S E. It's a German style beer, and it is a wheat beer. But what makes it different is that it's uh, basically out of Leipzig, Germany, and uh, the water content there uh, is very minerally and very salty. So what they did is they basically brewed this wheat beer um, very, very low in hops, and they've got a nice dryness and spice because they used ground coriander seeds and the addition of salt in it. Like I said, mm. and it's also uh, basically uh, brewed with lactic acid, which is a different type of fermentation, and it's going to make it very sour. Now, what people will do is they'll also kind of put some different types of fruits and uh, flavorings in it to kind of uh, calm that tartness down. But it's only about 4 to 5% ABV, so very low in alcohol. And like I said, it's just crisp. It's refreshing. It's a really, really nice beer. In fact, you told me the other day that you actually had one. You might not even known about it. So, uh, Creature Comfort's Tritonia is a local one, and you had that one. It was cucumber and lime. Mm. Um, it's absolutely de- delicious. And like I said, you usually get, uh, when you first drink a Goza, uh, a little bit of saltiness in the front, and then you kind of get the fruit in the back. And so it's it's an interesting mix. It's not something that, uh, you know, like a lemonade or something that's going to be a, a, like a like a Coke or something that's very sweet and very syrupy. Right. It's going to be light. It's going to be crisp. It's going to be dry and just a really nice, refreshing beer. So Creature Comforts Tritonia, like I said, that's probably one of my favorites that they've, that's out here locally. Uh, Terrapin also makes a watermelon Goza as well, which is basically exactly what you'd think of it as. A great watermelon. It actually, for me, it almost tastes like a watermelon Jolly Rancher on the oh, back end. Oh, yeah. You like those watermelon Jolly Ranchers yeah, back buddy. in the day? That's right. Uh, Westbrook out of South Carolina, they make a, a Goza, one of the highest ranked in the country, actually. And that's pretty easy to find around uh, the local uh, bottle shops. So uh, check that one out. Uh, also, another one by a local brewery called Second Self. Actually, we have them on the show this week. So uh, if you missed the show, check out the podcast at uh, BeerGuysRadio.com. You can listen to the guys from Second Self. They've got one of the best names uh, of beers I've ever, I've ever seen, which is called Maverick and Goza. So uh, Top Gun reference, if you haven't figured that one out. Now, now are most or all the guys of these available in the cans? Because yes. you know what? I pulls love the cans, not the bottle. It, exactly. Exactly. And then all of them basically are available in cans, with the exception of the Creature Comforts Tritonia. That's only available on draft, as far as I know. I've not seen it on cans, and I don't think there's any plans to do it. But uh, that second self, Maverick and Goza, Terrapin Watermelon Goza, and the Westbrook uh, Goza, definitely out there. Uh, there are a few other ones. Uh, Anderson Valley out of California makes some really nice Goza as, as well. But uh, like I said, you can pick up a nice uh, six-pack uh, cans and uh, crush them, and you'll be a happy person this summer. And I bet you could find a lot of these selections at Truck and Tap, right? Uh, Truck and Tap does. We'll have some uh, some uh, uh, Gozas on tap as well. Most uh, any good beer bar will have a few of them. And, and really, it's a nice introduction to someone who maybe likes a champagne or maybe likes wine uh, as opposed to a beer. Uh, introduce them to a Goza, and uh, they might be... Uh, change their minds about uh, what beer should taste like. Oh, so good. As always, Aaron, it's a pleasure to have you on. Thank you so much for your time. Anytime. Right. So what do you do on Monday morning at 1 a.m.? 
For those of you who said sleep, eh, wrong, you're going to get up and listen to my main man, Marquis A. Davis One. You may know him from the male soap opera moment. A brand new show entitled Lima Charlie Radio. That is loud and clear for all you civvies out there, such as myself. Welcome back to Wen's World, Marquis. Hey, hey. So, Marquis, give us a sneak peek as to what we can expect from Lima Charlie Radio. Well, Lima Charlie Radio is really here just to serve those who have served. I'm a veteran myself, so I want to reach back out because when I got out of the military, I didn't have that help. I didn't know where to go. I didn't have resources. I didn't know anyone. I was kind of just winging it. So this show is to give veterans, service members, active duty, anybody in any branch of military life the sources and resources they need to help transition into civilian life. What a fantastic idea, an idea to give back to those who have served us and our families. When can people listen to your show, Marquis? We'll be on on Mondays at 1 a.m. in the morning on AM 920, The Answer. And of course, 24-7, 365.25 on SoundCloud.com. Up in the search bar, Lima, Charlie, L-I-M-A-C-H-A-R-L-I-E Radio. Marquis, thank you for your time. Thank you. Hi, I'm Santa Claus, and you are in Wins World. This is Larry W.A.C.H.S. of the world-famous W.A.C.H.S. Modcast, Atlanta's number one smartphone radio show on iTunes and Google Play. But that's nothing compared to Wen's World. Larry W.A.C.H.S. Man, I can't wait till you get back on full time. There's one. (laughs) I can tell him, hey, I got one. Well, of course you'd have one. You'd have me and Prodigy, at least, and definitely Aaron. Mm-hmm. That's three. That's three. Plus everybody they know. I just triple my audience in three seconds. There you go, Amazing. man. Yeah. I, uh, I I think something good is going to happen real soon. I know so, something's good, good going to happen. You are in the mix, man. Yeah. You're like the cake mix. No eggs needed. Like <laughs> it comes with the eggs and the flour and all that. Just give it the love and the time. Throw it in the oven and watch what comes out. Something delicious and moist and ready to be consumed. Oh, I love when you call me delicious and moist because <laughs> I am delicious and somewhat moist. <laughs> I never like to be dry. <laughs> I just want to pick your brain about what I can learn from you over the years. What what have you think about? I mean, yeah, okay. <clears throat> what have you learned from listening to me? Or I've learned to just say what you think. It may be unpopular. It may be something that I have to apologize for. But I always end up having to apologize to myself at the end of the day if I don't tell people how I really feel and how they encouraged me to feel. And not to get all super sensitive, but I think it's important that we do tell people what's on our minds. And you and your show, along with your partners back in the day, really helped me to understand that and flesh that out. I remember being in Rhubarb's class at KSU Uh and Rodney Ho came in as a guest lecturer. Is that right? Yeah, he did. mind blowing. And he came in and I raised my hand. I mentioned the regular guys love to one day have a show and be somewhat a shell of who they are. Mm -hmm. And... He's like, well, you should definitely shoot higher than that. I about fainted. So he disparaged us. I, maybe he was joking. I'm going to believe. No, the best. I don't think so. I think what he meant was he didn't like our content. Maybe he just, he just thought it was lowbrow. For somebody to think it's lowbrow is basically them saying that they are too highbrow to understand the common man's plight. Well, I mean, I you you got to learn to brush that off. I've learned not to argue with people anymore. They're entitled to their opinions. Just listen. To their opinion, just because somebody invites you to an argument doesn't mean you have to attend. Right. And if some, I've heard uh, millions of times, they're, they're never going to last. Our own sales staff when we first came, yeah, said they're never going to last, and I underestimated all all my career. Five, four, three, two, one. Well. Was awkward. awkward. So Rebecca, a 38 year old man uh, just outside of Bangkok, was sitting on the toilet doing his business. All of a sudden, a 10 foot python comes up through the toilet and attaches himself to, well, the man's member. I can't imagine the thoughts that went through his mind and his wife's mind. I mean, they both lose equally in this situation if things don't go well. So their first thought was, hey, we need help. We got to call the neighbor. Can you imagine how that phone call went? 
Ring, ring. Oh, um, God. hello. Oh, God. Yes, oh, I'm going to need some help over here. Oh, my, my husband got his oh, penis bitten oh, off by, oh, a, oh, by a python. I'm going to need your help over here to come oh, dislodge it. A minute later, the neighbor arrived. All three of them worked together to separate the snake's jaw from the man's junk. A lot of blood was lost, so naturally they called the authorities to come help out. The authorities came and finally got the snake out from the pipe. This snake is literally every bit of 10 feet. It's massive. Now, Rebecca, if you were this man's wife, what would be going on in your mind right now? Well, aside from trying to keep from laughing, I probably <laughs> <laughs> I probably would be thinking, oh my God, is my husband going to lose his member? I, I mean, he can't function without his Jimmy. Come on. Yeah, that's pretty much a romance killer from there on out. What's worse is that nowadays anything that happens is noticed around the globe. I mean, this happened in Thailand, and we know about it here in America. And even more awkward is that the man's picture is all over the web. Thankfully for him, I can't even pronounce it, Adaporn Bunmakchi. Forgive me, I butchered the heck out of that name. But he is thankfully going to survive, and his Adaporn Jr. is going to survive. He's going to need some <laughs> stitches, but he's going to make a recovery. Thank God. You know what? I think it's safe to say that this man will forever squat rather than sit. And it may go without saying, but that, that was awkward. awkward. Break! Friends, can faith and science mingle? It seems as if the theory of the Big Bang and the notion of creation always seem to be at odds with each other. But on the other end of this break, we're going to find out how the Big Bang and creation actually worked in tandem with astrophysicist, astronomer, and author Dr. Hugh Ross. Back in two minutes with Weird Science. Is death beating you down? You need discipline. You need the Death Ninja. If you've been caught in a financial trap and need to be set free, then you need the Death Ninja. Want to stop those harassing collection calls? Start saving thousands in interest and fees and get out of debt fast? Then you need to call the Debt Ninja. The Debt Ninja will find the best companies across the country that will help you consolidate all your bills into one easy payment, reduce your payments by 30 to 50%, and get you out of debt fast. If you have unsecured debt of $10,000 or more, such as credit cards, loans, or medical bills, call the Debt Ninja for a free 15-minute consultation. Call 800-826-1246. 800-826-1246. That's 800-826-1246. Call today. The Debt Ninja. Tired of paying outrageous prices for Viagra? Well, we have great news for you. Now you can finally get Viagra at huge discounts. Healthy Man allows you to save up to $500 on Viagra. Why pay U.S. pharmacy prices of $15 per pill or more when you can get Viagra for less than $3 a pill? Call today and get 40 Viagra pills for only $99. This can cost as much as $600 at your local pharmacy. You can't afford not to call us. If you want Viagra at the lowest prices, never pay $15 a pill pharmacy prices again. Get Viagra for less than $3 a pill. Call 1-800-516-7602 today and save up to $500 and get 40 pills for just $99. Healthy Man is fast, easy, and affordable. Operators are waiting at 1-800-516-7602 to take your call right now. Call 1-800-516-7602. That's 1-800-516-7602. Again, 1-800-516-7602. Follow Joey on Twitter at producer underscore Joey. It's always fantastic to have return visitors to Wen's World, this time with author, astronomer, and astrophysicist Dr. Hugh Ross. Welcome back to the show, Hugh. How are you? I'm doing well, thank you. Dr. Ross, you're very familiar with the European Organization for Nuclear Research, uh, better known as CERN. Yes. Now, let me put my tinfoil hat on here for a second and say that there are some people that are concerned with what they are doing at CERN as it pertains to particle physics. What do you think about that? It's French. It's referring to the gigantic particle accelerator that uh, is situated in Switzerland and France. Right. And there's been a lot of speculation that uh, this is going to produce uh, something supernaturally weird. 
uh, that they're going to actually make a black hole. It's going to suck the whole universe up, or the planet Earth is going to dis- uh, be destroyed, or they're going to actually make uh, connections uh, with something supernatural. One way to dispel all that is that we astronomers for decades have been studying sources in the universe where the energy density is much higher than what we can duplicate in the CERN particle accelerator. So I just encourage people, no worries. We've already checked that out. Nothing weird happens when we observe these high energy density sources in the universe. And so let's encourage the CERN people to do their work as it's the highest thing we've ever made in the laboratory in terms of energy densities. I think some phenomenal discoveries are going to come out. But rest assured, they're not going to be able to make a black hole. It's not going to suck up the earth. It's not going to be the end of humanity. Do you feel like it could serve as a spiritual portal? I don't think so, because, I mean, they're not doing anything occult. You know, it could be some occult physicists that are working there. After all, there's thousands of them that work at that facility. You know, that, so there could be something going on in a lab there. But as far as the instrument itself, hey, it's simply an instrument investigating the physics of particles. And it's going to actually tell us some insights about the universe. And so I'm excited about it. And as an astronomer, what's exciting to me is is integrating what they're discovering in their particle accelerator with what we astronomers are seeing in high-energy density sources in our galaxy and in other galaxies and quasars. Because, you know, it's two different ways of looking at the same phenomena. So, yeah, I'm expecting some really exciting breakthroughs. So for the common man such as myself, how could this benefit humanity? Well, I think it's going to, I mean, I'm excited as a Christian and as an astrophysicist because I see both CERN and the complementary studies in astrophysics as showing us design that we've never been able to see before. Mm. I mean, we're uncovering phenomenal fine-tuning design, not only at the particle physics level, but at the scale of the entire universe. And that's what's remarkable about this CERN instrument, is it's actually showing us it's showing us what conditions in the early universe were like. So I think, for example, the combination of astrophysics and particle physics, it's going to reveal to us the world of exotic dark matter, particles that don't interact well uh, with light. Wow. And, you know, there's six times as much exotic dark matter as there's ordinary dark matter. And I'm convinced that ongoing research is going to reveal to us a whole new level of fine-tuning design arguments which I'm excited about exploiting for proving to scientists skeptics this agent beyond space and time must be a personal being because only a personal being is capable of exquisite fine-tuning design at every level that we can observe. Now, as we wrap things up with Dr. Hugh Ross, astronomer and astrophysicist, as well as author of the book Lights in the Sky and Little Green Men, he's taken a rational Christian look at UFOs and extraterrestrials. You brought up the beginnings, right, and what they're doing with this project CERN, trying to figure out, hey, how did it start? Can you go into just a little bit of detail about how the idea of creation and the Big Bang are not mutually exclusive? Well, that's, that's one big factor in my coming to faith in Jesus Christ, was as a teenager, going through the Old Testament and seeing that all the fundamentals of Big Bang cosmology were taught thousands of years before any astronomer even had a hint that we live for an example and expand the universe. Mm-hmm. Eleven places in the Bible I see explicit statements that the universe expands from a space-time beginning. I mean, you see that it also claims it expands under laws of physics that don't change, or one of those laws is a pervasive law of decay. As a 17-year-old reading the Bible seriously for the first time, I realized that if all those biblical statements are correct, then the universe must get colder and colder as it gets older and older in a highly predictable way. And now we've got measurements in astronomy that demonstrate that what the Bible predicted thousands of years ago is numerically accurate. The universe indeed is being observed to get colder and colder in exactly the way the Bible predicted. Now, how do you see that in light of claims of global warming worldwide? Well, global warming is uh, you know what's happening uh, with the Earth's atmosphere, and so it's trapping more of the sun's heat. It's a relatively short-term effect. The cooling of the universe takes place over billions of years. So, for example, in the next billion years, 
the cooling of the universe is going to be barely measurable. We're talking it's going to cool by about a hundredth of a degree uh, in the next half billion years. So that's not much of a change. Right. A bigger change is what's going to happen to the sun. The sun gets brighter and brighter as it continues to fuse hydrogen to helium in its core. So in just 10 million years, the sun will be so bright that photosynthesis will no longer be able to operate on the face of the earth, which means all animal life uh, will cease to exist. So uh, that's, that's a little shorter term. But global warming is something where, for example, what we've noticed in all the previous ice ages of the current ice age cycle, whenever the global mean temperature rises to 3 degrees centigrade above where it is now, we drop quickly into an ice age. And, uh, you know, that could happen if we, pull, if we melt the polar ice cap, for example. What do you think about the theory of flat Earth? Now, a lot of people are kind of looking back at that as not being as dumb as it sounds on its face. So what do you think about that? Well, I think it's kind of a hoax because I'm seeing that all over the web where uh, there's these posts of, hey, here's evidence that the world is really flat. And, uh, you know, it's fairly arcane stuff for lay people. So a lot of what I do on my Facebook and Twitter page is basically help lay people understand why these new arguments for a flat earth are bogus. And so it's a good way for me just to educate people on the basic physics. But one reason why we can discount the flat earth hypothesis, over the past 300 years, the case for the flat earth creationist model has gotten progressively more and more absurd. And I think that's a good analogy for what's happening in the atheist camp as atheist scientists try to defend the idea that there's no God behind the universe, their appeals are getting progressively more and more absurd. We can never prove anything away absolutely. You know, I tell atheist uh, friends of mine, I don't have absolute proof my wife exists, but I got a very high probability of her existence through my experiments and observations. Yeah. Likewise, I would argue the case for God is even stronger. Wow. It's not absolute, but it's adequate. Man, that is such good stuff. Of course, you can keep the conversation going on Twitter. Follow Dr. Hugh Ross, astronomer and astrophysicist, at RTB underscore H Ross. And of course, RTB standing for Reasons to Believe. Also check out his website, www.reasons.org. There you can find uh, a little bit about what Dr. Ross and his associates are doing, events, education. You can also buy some really cool stuff. Their books, DVDs, devotional studies. I mean, you name it, they have it there. Dr. Ross, I got to say, this has been one of the more fascinating interviews I've ever conducted, and I feel grateful that you've taken the time to carve out today. Thank you so much. Oh, you're very welcome. Is there a gene that separates risk takers from the cautionary? On the other end of this break, we're speaking with author Kate Sukel about that very subject. Stay with us. It's who you are. All writers are prone to becoming so attached to our characters and stories that we struggle to see why a passage may not be working. It takes another set of eyes to help us nurture our writing into full maturity. A Black Wolf Editorial Services, we strive to enable writers to develop and grow, shaping stories into masterpieces that can stand the test of time. Editing services are provided for all genres and all age categories. Services range from critiques of the short story through to line edits of the full-length novel and copy editing for those preparing for publication. We also offer assistance on generating a writer's file for your website, as well as help with those book blurbs and promotional material. We won't abandon you to the masses. We want to celebrate with you and your successes. Black Wolf Editorial Services. Nurturing your writing into maturity. For a full list of services and prices, visit us at blackwolfeditorial.com. This is Slickery Trigger for Rebel Road Tactical. With proper care and feeding, your pistol will be ready when you need it. There to save your life. Shouldn't your gear be that good? Whether you need a holster for comfortable, everyday carry, 
or a tough-as-nails holster for your next training course. Rebel Road Tactical has what you need. Check us out on the web at rebelroadtactical.com. You're in Wayne's World. Friends, welcome back to Wen's World. It's a pleasure to have resident author Kate Sukel back with us. How are you, Kate? I am very well, thanks. How about yourself? I'm um, doing great. So yesterday I was by the pool reading your book, The Art of Risk, available wherever books are sold. And I was focused on this one part. It's early on, I think the first or second chapter, where it talks about how some people are intrinsically more likely to take risks than others. Now I want to kind of pick your brain about why some people jump headfirst into the deep end and how others kind of just take the stairs down into the water and, <laughs> and, and possibly what role the gene pool has to play in that. Right. So, you know, of course, um, as we learn more about DNA, scientists have been on the search for genes that explain all kinds of things. And of course, that's more, you know, it started with disease states and, and medicine and that's morphed into behavior. And so the big question is be, why do some people act so impulsively? Why do some people, and, and a lot of this has come from, why do some people end up in jail, addicted to drugs, uh, doing criminal acts, violent, etc.? And so a lot of that started there. But there seems to be certain genes that act on this decision-making circuit on the brain, which means that you're a lot more likely to pump the gas, so to speak, fly by the seat of your pants than to take a step back and say, wait a minute, maybe the stairs would be a better option. Um, So a few of those genes of interest, um, probably the most widely studied is one called DRD4, and it's a dopamine receptor gene. And scientists have found that if you have a certain variant called the 7R+, which means that you have a bunch of repeats in a certain section of this gene, um, you're much more likely to be sexually promiscuous Hmm. and be involved in more, uh, you know, risky one-night stand type sexual behaviors. You are more likely to bet really big on a monetary lottery task. Uh, you are much more likely to go in for high bids on bridge. I don't know why they're studying bridge. I guess somebody, <laughs> but you know, but then again, you know, my grandma used to play bridge and they were pretty cutthroat about it. So, um, you know, but they've also linked it to people who have this variant. They're much more likely um, if they are play extreme sports like snowboarding or skateboarding, they're much more quick to get back up after being injured and start to do those sports again. So that's pretty fascinating that across all these different things, just having this one genetic variant means that you're much more likely to behave in this risky manner. Now, based on your research, who are some notable names that we may recognize who has this variation? I, you know, I don't know. Um, You know, I think, and that's the really interesting part of it because, you know, as part of this, I got tested for DRD4, and I will tell you that that, uh, Justin Garcia, who's one of the um, neuroscientists, or he's actually a cultural anthropologist who works on this kind of stuff, he was convinced I was going to come back as a 7R+. From the very beginning, interesting. everybody was shocked. They're like, wait a minute. What's going Hello, on? You know, wrong here. My mother just sat there. She's like, did you tell him about all the stupid uh, things he used to do when you were younger, Kate? To be and I was like, no, Mom. <laughs> um, so, because this is really the important thing. A gene, you know, we talk about genes like it's the risk-taking gene or the intelligence gene or the weight gene or, or what have you. But genes, what they do is they, they code for a protein. And I know that that doesn't, it's not as interesting or as sexy as saying, oh, it's the warrior gene. But what's really interesting is that all of these genes have a very small contribution to behavior. And, of course, it's going to be contributions of probably hundreds, if not thousands, of different genes that make those uh, behaviors different. But over time, isn't it amazing that such a small contribution can lead to such very different lives lives. Yeah. And uh, that is fascinating. And, it's, of course, it's a huge puzzle for scientists to sort out. So I think that certainly what the science shows is there are some people out there that are much more likely to want to push the envelope. They like more stimulation in their lives. They're going to be the people that go for extreme sports. They're going to have the higher stress jobs. They may just need that kind of stimulation and come home and just, you know, pick a fight with their spouse every day so they can have that kind of level 
level of stimulation in life. Um, and some of us are, are don't need that much to get going. And that's probably that's going to influence the way that we make decisions. And of course, as such, how we take risks. Wow, that is fascinating stuff. Again, if you're just joining us, I am with author Kate Sukel. She wrote a fascinating book. It's called The Art of Risk. It's a National Geographic book. And this is actually part of the Summer of Risk Twitter campaign. Can you go into a little bit more about that? Sure. So one of the really fascinating things, actually the best thing about me about the, writing this book is as I've gone around to, to bookstores and universities talking about it, people have come up to me and said, once I read this, I was inspired to take a few more risks, to take a leap. Um, and these aren't big risks. It's not like they're coming up to me and saying, I'm going to start drag race. In or, you know, I'm going to go knock off the uh, Circle K, what they're saying is, I want to push the envelope. I want to get out of my comfort zone. And so people have said that they, you know, got up the courage to ask to take the lead on a project at work, that they're going back to school to get a Master of Fine Arts. One woman even told me that she plans to start knitting with the expensive yarn. And you may think, okay, big deal, right? But the thing is, this is pushing the edge of your performance ability. This is using uncertainty and risk to your advantage to get better at something that you want to get better at, to build your skills, to have more fun, and, and to get where you want to go. So National Geographic and I partnered on this Summer of Risk, hashtag Summer of Risk campaign, and we're just asking you to throw up hey a there, selfie. Hey Show us what Thanks for smart watching MSNBC seasoned risk on that you're going to take um, this summer. And, and some of the things that have come up so far, me, uh, there's a great shot of a guy uh, of who's swimming with videos. some sharks, I think very safely. Uh, another Another guy who's planning to do some, um, do a, I think, a, a rattlesnake safari so he can show his kids rattlesnakes, which I think is fun. But then you also have, you know, my kids wanted to put one up and they put up a picture of them trying snuba diving. Huh. So it's not scuba diving. It's just, you know, and they were a little afraid about, you know, going all the way under the water, but they did it. They rocked it. And then that was their start of their summer of risk. So I'd love to see yours. So all you have to do is on uh, Facebook or Twitter, throw up a picture, tell us about the smart season risk you're going to take this summer, and then uh, tag your location and put up hashtag summer of risk. Our favorites will be shared on the National Geographic uh, Facebook page, and five lucky uh, participants will win a National Geographic Summer Reads prize pack, which has some awesome books in it. Oh, that is so cool. Always a fascinating conversation with author Kate Sukell. Let's keep the conversation rolling and going on Twitter. You can find her at Kate Sukell, K-A-Y-T. S-U-K-E-L. Next week, I'd love to have you back, and we can talk about the science of the lottery in our brains and how we process that. What do you think? Oh, I would love to, because you know what? Uh, I just bought a lottery ticket today, and um, yeah, I'm gonna, I am gonna. I have a feeling this is going to be it. <laughs> well, if you win, you'll still do the interview, right? Of course. <laughs> Kate, thank you so much for your time. Always a pleasure. All right. Thank you. Have a great day. You too. Life is always moving and shaking right here in Wen's World. Without further ado, the very latest. The, the following, following are the don'ts and do's of exceptionally, exceptionally eccentric, eccentric leadership. leadership. Kim Chung II, former Supreme Leader of the Democratic People's Republic of Korea, better known as North Korea, this guy was all about absolute power. He wanted to be glorified by his people as pretty much as God on Earth. So, he had a famous director's wife kidnapped from South Korea and brought into North Korea. Now the unhappy husband made his way into the country in order to save his wife. Once he arrived, he realized that he was prisoner. Him and his wife worked together to collaborate and make seven movies for the Supreme Leader, many of which deified Kim Chung II. These were propaganda films. The last was kind of a knockoff of the movie Godzilla. It was entitled Pulgasari. The Supreme Leader was so pleased by this quote-unquote masterpiece that he allowed the director and his wife to take a business trip to Vienna. Surprisingly, once the director and his wife got to Vienna, they went straight to the American embassy and never returned to North Korea. Now, here are some leadership lessons that we can apply from this case study to our own lives. If we ever get the opportunity to kidnap a Steven Spielberg or Judd Apatow, capitalize on that opportunity. But don't get duped when your prisoners ask to leave and go somewhere because they're not coming back. So in this case study, Mr. Spielberg wants to run to Subway because he's hungry. 
I would say, no, Mr. Spielberg, you may not go to Subway. I will go for you. Would you prefer a BMT or a meatball sub? The Supreme Leader got caught slipping because he ended up trusting those he held captive. Big mistake. However, I will give credit where credit is due. So, America big points to Kim Jong the second for his plan Without that God, actually worked. There is a course but those points automatically deducted for trusting his prisoners to not desert him when they were given a chance. The belief that the right <laughs> to land it sure is, Sham. So that's what we do here in Wen's world. We get weird. On the other we end of this forget. break, comedian Mike Loftus joins us from the FlipSideShow.com, and then I head down we to Turner Field to witness the very first time that interim manager. Brian Snicker sure gets tossed from the game. And of course, we'll finish the show with heart, sweat, and lots of baby our oil. Our male soap future. opera moment featuring at Marquis A. Right Davis Moyne. Literally Individuals and businesses with tax problems, listen carefully. Do you feel like you're losing control over your finances? If you owe over $10,000 in back taxes or have unfiled tax returns, we can help you take back control. The IRS is the largest and most aggressive collection agency in the world, and they can seize your bank account. Garnish your paycheck, close your business, and file criminal charges. Take control of your tax problems now by calling the experts at Tax Mediation Services and take advantage of the Fresh Start program and new laws that may allow us to negotiate a settlement for the lowest amount possible. Our team of tax attorneys and enrolled agents can stop collections and get you protected so you can take control of your financial future. Tax Mediation Services is accredited by the Better Business Bureau. Call now for a free case review and a price protection guarantee. Quote, call Tax Mediation Services now at 800-610-9050. That's 800-610-9050. 800-610-9050. This is Wen's World. You're just living in it. Mike Loftus, the one and only comic. How are you, buddy? You have got him on the line. We are live. Go ahead, caller. <laughs> um, hi, Joey here uh, from Wen's World, a place in a distant galaxy where real questions are asked and real answers are sought after. I'm not sure if Mike Loftus comic heard about a specific hashtag going down this week. Hashtag hold the floor. What does all this entail in your opinion, Mike? This is the, the, the Democrats in the House, yeah? Mm-hmm. Oh, it's fantastic. Like, it's always a great idea, he said, being super sarcastic. Uh, when you're when you're incredibly emotional, when you're incredibly emotional, that's the time you want to start talking about passing laws. Mm. It is the worst idea in the history of ideas. Like literally, I think there's there. I don't think all the the victims have been buried yet, mm. and they're like, we gotta pass a law. The exact time when you don't want to pass a law. Well, you know, never let a good crisis go to waste, especially when you're in politics. Absolutely. That is that is the way of, of the Democrats. That's the way of, uh, wasn't that Obama's advisor said that? Wasn't that a Rahm Emanuel guy who said that? Yeah, that, that definitely uh, isn't too vague in my memory past there. But, I mean, this isn't the first time a, a bunch of politicians have sat around doing nothing, right? Right. And they're, they're having uh, Pop-Tarts delivered and food <laughs> is being brought in. And they're like, you're not allowed to televise it, but they're getting crazy. They're putting it on Periscope. Look at them go. It's the worst. They're li- and they're literally talking about getting rid of due process. You have been you have been accused of a crime. Just because you've been accused of crime, we're going to put you on a list, and we're going to start taking away your uh, rights as an American. Incredibly frightening. Well, this is what bugs me because I think on a surface level, most people would read this headline and think they're up to good, right? They're trying to do something good for America in the long run. Expand background check. You know, shut down the ability for people that have been on the terror watch list at any point to own a weapon. Uh, But the thing is, and let me adjust my tinfoil hat here for a second. Eventually, uh, wouldn't anybody that runs contrary in the thought process to the current administration, whether that be now or 10 years from now, be considered somebody to be worthy uh, of on a watch list? Absolutely. And then if they pass a law that says you can do this, then you have established a legal precedent for doing it. Mm. But that, but you're you're exactly right. People, your casual everyday person is going to turn on okay. the news so and they're going to go look at these congressmen that, 
trying to do good, and these and, uh, horrible Republicans are trying to stop them. It is, uh, a common sense approach. Now you you know can't stop people, people from killing people. people. Right I think there. it was just earlier Obviously this week no in China, a guy went on a knife that, spree and killed several dozen people. And Dude, more people get killed by knives than they do with rifles. No idea that that's okay, handguns are still, I think, up there. But and more people so, get killed by knives than they do with rifles, and bit more, more people get beaten to death moment, than with um, knives. And uh, and if I you want to talk about leading cause of death, let's talk work. about the number three leading cause okay. of death is some kind of medical malpractice, then, uh, some kind of uh, a mistake that the hospital with, makes or the uh, nurse makes or the pharmacist makes. And, but I say what? Airport. They're literally uh, attacking, attacking the Bill of Rights. Right. Well, people are going to today? applaud them. It's well, it's, you know, it's their party and they'll cry if they want to. But isn't this country all about checks and balances? I mean, we have three branches of government for a reason. And they've already cast a vote on gun bills that have already been shut down. I think it was this last Monday. Four partisan gun measures all shut down. Uh, So at what point don't these politicians realize that, hey, okay, you brought it up, we voted on it, negated, 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 negated. negated. Now, what do we do? Sit down and start crying and sit in a circle kumbaya for 12 hours? What do we, I mean, where do we go from here? Well, here's where we go. Here's where we go. And this is all, let me let me put on my tinfoil hat. It's a it's a win-win for the Democratic Party. Right, it mm-hmm. over, because they tried to do again. something, Another and the Republicans uh, uh, are viewed as trying to oppose it. Video here. And the Democrats and are like, "Hey, we tried to save you, but the Republicans stopped it." So when and everybody's case, congressional uh, seat is coming back and up and their Senate seat is coming back up, they've got uh, all this wonderful footage. Here's me. I was there till three so o'clock in the running, morning, they already know, trying to save uh, your life. And happening. this guy, uh, my opponent, trying away, is trying to literally kill you. Oh, who are you going to vote for? I can see the commercial now, Mister Loftus. Okay, here we go. Absolutely. We'll start with the black and white. The Republicans supported terror acts by opposing stricter gun restrictions. Q color TV. But this Democrat sat in a circle for 12 hours trying to save you and your children. Mike yeah. Loftus, at Mike Loftus Comic on Twitter. Of course, your website, yeah. theflipsideshow.com. <laughs> I mean, it's so black and white to anybody that's really paying attention. I mean, I'm a gun owner. I'm not a gun freak. I won't take it to the airport and wave it around like Ted Nugent. This is a Second Amendment right. It's in the Bill of Rights. So it's kind of a yeah. big deal to me. It's number two. And it protects <laughs> all your other rights. And, and like it's not for self, it's not for self defense, and it's not for uh, hunting. It's for protection against a giant government who thinks they know more than you do. And I know I sound crazy. All right, all you people shaking your heads, you freaking righty. Okay, look, I'm a libertarian, but I can also see the writing on the wall here. And this is a step, slowly but surely. How do you kill a frog? You don't throw him in the boiling water. You throw him in the pot of cool water. Then you slowly turn up the heat. Before long. You got frog legs, right? Absolutely. So, at, absolutely. At what point are people going to start to see the truth, the phantom behind the opera here, and realize that slowly but surely these are measures the government is taking, trying to convince us that we don't know what's best for ourselves? It, it and I, unfortunately, you and I, we need to uh, we need to figure out a way to express that idea because it's a long thought, right? Yeah. Now you can you if you're just if you're just a, a regular uh, guy or girl and you're driving to work, you can see it on a billboard. A senator standing there, he's been up all night, he's sweating, he's like he tried to save your life and and pass a common sense. They always say common sense. Right. Like they've been they've been using that now for months. They're trying to like, "Hey, it's just common sense." It's just common sense. It's it's brilliant but, marketing. I got to give them yeah, that. It is. They are very they, very and, smart. And dude, they're all on the same page mm-hmm. because it was the uh, it was the governor of Virginia about three months ago. I, I remember listening to him talk, and he said common sense like eight times. And I'm like, okay, this is for real because now now they have like a little catchphrase for it. You can show that idea rather quickly. A lot of people aren't going to stop and think about it. So here's the brilliant thing, and once again, it takes forever. The founding fathers were very concerned about knee jerk reaction. That why they, that's why they didn't have just the president and just the Congress, right? You got the Congress Every and day, the Senate. Yep. The men so and women of the United States Marine Corps 
demonstrate their commitment to defend the American way of life. Since 1775, we have served our nation as a force in readiness. From combat operations to humanitarian assistance. Right? Yeah. Every I corner mean, of the world. Still hot. People are still mourning. Look, I don't know what the it's young like to lose a close, close family Marines member or loved one to gun from violence. Our to I don't. A part but of I can also see themselves. that. Hey, this something far worse in the future could happen to this country, of our if, we our country our and our if we give up our only defense against a government so large, a military so large, a police force so large. And you know what? They are under orders. Dude, I just watched the documentary about Tiananmen Square. The journey will be one right? of the most challenging, and but also one of the most rewarding. Freedom-loving the people the that proud, went in, they camped in Tiananmen Square. And I tell you, the Chinese government made sure they did it in the middle of the night, and the cameras weren't on. And uh, I've seen still photos of it, of, like, army men in these big vehicles... And there's like a regular like a Chinese working class dude, like say, look, in the he's like telling the guy, you, you can't shoot and your fellow citizens. Time to put up. We're, we're all Chinese. We're all on the I same team. That thin line. Gonna, we're trying to make this a better he's China for everybody. Degrees, and they murdered hot, hundreds of people. Fire. And that wasn't that we long ago, 1989, hot, right? Hot. Yeah. You yeah. Don't, feel don't think they want to turn their weapons on the regular citizenry. Men and and women, the United uh, States my heart goes out to people in Orlando. It goes out to anybody that's ever uh, lost a loved one, family life, member, close friend to gun violence. Believe proud, me, people. Trust me. I try to be as level-headed as possible. You got to look at the arc of this, right? It's not as simple as protection. There are deeper issues at play here. And this is the first step to put me, you, and at Mike Loftus comic on a list because if you have an opinion that is contrary to those in power, look out. This is the first step to disarm this citizenry of the United States of America. I'm going to back you up in more ways than, than you know. I'm going to back you so up. It's huge. It's going to make your head spin. If you disagree with the official party line now, you're already in trouble. I don't know if you knew this. If you write a letter to the editor, to the L.A. Times, and you say, you know what? Global warming, I don't think it's a thing, because there's a problem with this data and that data. They refuse to publish your, article, your, your letter. The LA Times has publicly said, if you disagree with climate change, we will, not pub- we, we, we will not tolerate your opinion. In textbooks, I think it's in Oregon and in Washington, in textbooks, there's a movement now, and I think they just won, that they're going to say climate change is a fact. It is a fact. If you disagree with it, you're a quack. Uh, Here's the thing. You know, I can't argue that the climate is changing. But what I can argue with Al Gore and company who have made millions and millions of dollars off this scheme is that it has nothing to do with what I do with hairspray, with my car. These are natural phenomena that have occurred on this planet for hundreds of thousands of years. Guess what? Without human beings even being on the earth. And it's appalling. And and it's sick that they use... These kinds of things, and that's a great example of the government never letting a good crisis go to waste. And whether it be Republicans or Democrats, I'm not even saying that Republicans aren't out to take my rights away eventually, because I feel like all these politicians, it's like a wrestling match. They get out there with a microphone. I'm going to kick your butt at WrestleMania, brother. And then at backstage, hey, let's go grab a beer and a steak. I'm starving. Right. Absolutely. And, and let's make sure that our buddies get the good contracts. Exactly. And government spending can get a little bit bigger. And we can borrow this much money. Yeah, it's the same old, same old. I am so glad that we connected it's today. It's cathartic. You know, it's cathartic. I, you know, on the lighter side, though, this guy is hilarious. Check out his comedy, theflipsideshow.com. It is so funny, but also relevant because he incorporates real life issues into his comedy. He's not left. He's not right. He's correct. Well, dude, and like, here's what I'm trying to do. And I appreciate you bringing that up with the TV show. Right. Like I'm on I'm on this little channel. You to America. It's on DirecTV, and it's on Time Warner. You can find it. you got to go out of your way to find it. But all I'm trying to do is, like, talk about these issues in a comedic light yeah. in a way where somebody can stumble across it, right? Because you, you never hear this stuff. You have to, you have, unfortunately, you have to go out of your way to find this stuff. I'm trying to do something in the entertainment field, in the mainstream media. It's politics. It's comedy. It's entertaining. And hopefully... 
somebody will think about these views in a different way. Mike, man, that is so encouraging. Thank you so much for your time today. Again, folks, keep the conversation flowing and going on Twitter at Mike Loftus Comic. And of course, check out his TV show, The Flip Side Show. Com. And let's have you back for a return visit to Wen's World in the very near future. What do you say? Let's do it. I'm fired up now, man. I, I know. I'm fired up. I'm ready to take on the world. I'm sorry. I, I do it. I do it to people. I do it to myself. <laughs> My heart's jumping now. I need to go hit the stairs and run. <laughs> <laughs> there you go, man. Hey, I'll talk to you soon, all right? Awesome. Have a great day, Mike. You too, buddy. Friends, there is absolutely nothing like heading down to the ballpark to catch a Major League Baseball game. I headed down to Turner Field on Thursday to catch the Braves and the Mets. This night came with a lot of surprises along the way. I've heard of Christmas in July, but Christmas in June? I spotted Santa checking out the game from the terrace level. Santa, you're away from the North Pole. I know it's June. Are you taking a vacation from Mrs. Claus? I'm trying to stay away from her as much as possible right now. You know, this summer cleaning and all that, and I don't want to do nothing like that. Cleaning out the uh, reindeer stables, eh? Somebody has to, and (laughs) Santa's not going to. After the seventh inning stretch, things started heating up. Brian Snitker wants to understand what's going on. He might have been thrown out of the game. Yep, he has been. Manager Brian Snitker got thrown out of the game in the seventh inning for arguing against a challenge call that the Braves ended up losing. As Bonifacio was called out at home, the ruling upheld. He looked like he was about to lay the smackdown on the home plate umpire. I'm here to get fan reaction on what they think would be interim manager Brian Snitker's WWE finishing move. All right, it'd be the home run, and what he would do is he would like jump up, spin around, and like full like a 360 kick spin into the guy's size head, and that would knock him out. That's what would happen. Dirty skunk. Ninja takedown all day. I feel like it would be a play on the people's elbow, like something with that. The most electrifying move in sports entertainment, you say? Of course, because Snicker is amazing. I would say it would be the pedigree because that's down for the one, two, three. And, and we're at the game, so that yeah. makes sense, you know? Yeah. The 69. The 69. <laughs> Snicker with a 69! <laughs> I like the Stone Cold Stunner. Yeah, I just give him a stunner. Just sir- good, 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 good kick in the stomach and then grab him out of the neck and just ah. It's pretty obvious. Brian Snicker is a man of the people. Yeah. So the only thing that would fit that is the people's elbow. It has to be. The Rock, Dwayne Johnson, has trademarked that move. And I'm sure if you were to ask him, he would allow Brian Snicker to use that move. Full copyright infringement. <laughs> wave it out the door. <laughs> I couldn't help myself. After the game, I headed down to the Braves clubhouse to get exclusive audio from Braves interim manager, Brian Snitker. You know, the replays, what they are, you know, and I had a little different view, I think, and it's just, I know it's not those guys out there, but one of those things that I just, you know, it's the right time, I thought, and um, like I say, them guys are laying it out there for me, and and, um, it's just, you know, it's a tough situation anymore with the replay. You just kind of limited to... And, you know, every now and then, like you may need to bend a little bit and just get it off your chest. I love me some good old-fashioned wrestling. Ladies and gentlemen. This is your male soap opera moment. Estás escuchando la telenovela masculina con el productor Joey y Marquis Davis. Oh, you know it. Back again with the male. Soap opera moment in studio with me now is the bell. And in addition to the bell is our personal wrestling encyclopedia, Mr. Marquis A. Davis One. Ladies and gentlemen, let's get ready to rumble. And rumble we have seen in the WWE. Good news and bad news. A double-edged sword here. The former champion... Roman Reigns suspended until Battleground exactly one month from today. Marquis, what impact do you think this is going to have on the universe? I mean, only a small portion of the audience really do, do like Roman Reigns. Mm-hmm. We love to boo him, you know, yeah. just, like we, <laughs> just like we love to boo Seth Rollins. But then he came back, everybody loved to cheer him. But then he was like, shut up, don't cheer me. Right. You know, I actually think that they knew about this, uh, you know, suspension beforehand. That's why he dropped the belt to Rollins. And then in turn, Rollins dropped the belt to to Sloppy Dean. Yeah, and it's a clean drop too. Yeah, and I I, I liked it. You know, I, I had no quarrels with it. I, didn't, I wasn't upset about it. I kind of like the move of Dean Ambrose as champion, but I kind of don't like it as well. And here's what's next. You know, the the writers, the creative 
portion of the WWE can take this in several directions, this time off. I would like to see them um, make this public on TV. They've already made it public on their website. Be honest with the universe about it and don't play it off as an injury or a PR stunt. Just come out and tell us, hey, he's suspended. And this could be a great way to turn him heel. Yes. yes. I would love that. And But if you turn him heel, then you're just going to have one strong baby face, and that'll be uh, Sloppy Dean. Yeah. he's. You know what? It's it, That is a really, really good point. And one good thing about all this is that, you know, 30 days from now is Battleground. The triple threat still intact for right now, unless Dean Ambrose gets suspended or Rollins gets hurt because, you know, he's not going to mess up. But I'm still having a really hard time believing in Dean Ambrose as my world heavyweight champion. What about you? <laughs> you know what's funny is that I can see Dean being a one-time, two-time champion, kind of like uh, The Miz, you know? <laughs> yeah. But you got AJ Styles and John Cena squaring off, and AJ Styles beat John Cena very cl- Well, not cleanly, but he beat John Cena yeah. on a John Cena return, which doesn't happen. So I can see AJ Styles being the next big thing in WWE. I mean, he is really turning heel nicely, and it's believable, too, using... Uh, the club yeah, in that regard against the face that is Cena. Still the face, no pun intended, of the WWE. So, Marquis, in your opinion, Battleground a month away. In the meantime, they're killing time, obviously, because, yeah. yeah. you know, their face is wrapped up in some sort of scandal. And there's nothing been released as, as to what exactly it was. And look, I don't want to speculate. Could have been roids. Could have been something as simple as, you know, a, a fat-burning supplement, a chemical in there. There's- I'll speculate. He uh, probably did break their, uh, you know, drug abuse or drug substance policy because that's the only way you get 30 days is because of that. Just like the uh, NF- NBA, you know, you, you break a rule there, you get tested positive, you get around, you know, 30 days suspension, six games suspension, something like that. Same thing here in wrestling. Yeah, we'll have to wait and see. I, I really do wonder what it was. A lot of, it was funny, I was talking to a buddy of mine about Roman Reigns and I was talking about how much the vest still bothers me. Yeah. And he said he had a really interesting insight. He said, you know what? I think it's because of his body type. You know, he's part Samoan, part black. He comes from that lo- lineage of the Rock Johnson, right? Yeah. And so th- he, his uh, insight was that perhaps it's the the, pe- the pectoral area of his chest. You know what's funny is people don't notice, but the Rock had uh, breast surgery. Really? Yes. When he had the match against uh, Mankind, when he wore his shirt the whole match. Because he had just had the pectoral surgery. Wow. And, and you know what? It's, sometimes it is just genetics, and there's not much people can do about it. That's one of the reasons it makes me think the suspension is completely based around some sort of fat-burning supplement that the WWE has banned. Or it could be he's getting surgery. Maybe. That and, could be and, it, too. And they want him to, they want to try to live up the, the bad guy hype. You know, that people hate him so much, so they say, hey, we suspended him. And then he comes back shirtless. Yep. And as a bad mother, you yep. know what? Yep. And that's all the time we have for this edition of Male Soap Opera Moment. Thank you so much for listening. Again, follow the great Marquis A. Davis one on Twitter. (laughs) Keep the conversation rolling in and going there. And, of course, at Wens World Radio. Thanks again, guys. Friends, I can't begin to tell you how honored and blessed I feel to be part of the K98 Talk family. We'll have a brand new episode of Wens World up and ready by next Tuesday. In the meantime, follow the show on Twitter, at Wens World. Whiskey, elephant, narcolepsy, zebra, world. Excellent! Is death beating you down? You need discipline. You need the Death Ninja. If you've been caught in a financial trap and need to be set free, then you need the Death Ninja. Want to stop those harassing collection calls? Start saving thousands in interest and fees and get out of debt fast? Then you need to call the Debt Ninja. The Debt Ninja will find the best companies across the country that will help you consolidate all your bills into one easy payment, reduce your payments by 30 to 50%, and get you out of debt fast. If you have unsecured debt of $10,000 or more, such as credit cards, loans, or medical bills, call the Debt Ninja for a free 15-minute consultation. Call 800-826-1246. 800-826-1246. That's 800-826-1246. Call today. The Debt Ninja. 
the leader in talk radio on the Internet, right here on K98talk.com. For writers, For writers and public, and public personalities, it's becoming increasingly important to have an online presence. This normally takes the form of a website and social media. However, things like a cluttered site or broken links can scare potential readers away. It's time to get a health check. Until the 30th of June, Black Wolf Editorial Services is offering a special good site health check package. Get a new bio for your site. Have the site navigation and general layout assessed. Get a review of your Twitter activities. Get an objective opinion about your public Facebook page. Find out what works well and what could potentially scare your readers away. And all this for $35. At the end of the day, the face we put online will be the one that most people will see. Let us help you put your best foot forward. Black Wolf Editorial Services, nurturing your writing into maturity. For full details and a list of other services, visit us at blackwolfeditorial.com. Having a place to go after school will make you a better student. Having an outlet to express yourself will make you a better artist. Having something to do together will make you a better family. At The Y, we're helping build better friends, listeners, writers, swimmers, scientists, and musicians one chance at a time. Get the gift of opportunity. Support The Y at ymca.net. The Y for a better us. Individuals and businesses with tax problems, listen carefully. Do you feel like you're losing control over your finances? If you owe over $10,000 in back taxes or have unfiled tax returns, we can help you take back control. The IRS is the largest and most aggressive collection agency in the world, and they can seize your bank account, garnish your paycheck, close your business, and file criminal charges. Take control of your tax problems now by calling the experts at Tax Mediation Services and take advantage of the Fresh Start program and new laws that may allow us to negotiate a settlement for the lowest amount possible. Our team of tax attorneys and enrolled agents can stop collections and get you protected so you can take control of your financial future. Tax Mediation Services is accredited by the Better Business Bureau. Call now for a free case review and a price protection guaranteed quote. Call Tax Mediation Services now at 800-610-9050. That's 800-610-9050. 800-610-9050. Every day, the men and women of the United States Marine Corps stand ready to defend the American way of life. The few, the proud, the Marines. This is Slickery Trigger for Rebel Road Tactical. With proper care and feeding, your pistol will be ready when you need it. There to save your life. Shouldn't your gear be that good? Whether you need a holster for comfortable, everyday carry, or a tough-as-nails holster for your next training course, Rebel Road Tactical has what you need. Check us out on the web at rebelroadtactical.com. promise to the American people. If you like your doctor, 
you will be able to keep your doctor, period. If you like your health care plan, you'll be able to keep your health care plan, period. This is the most transparent administration in history. Not even a smidgen of corruption. Fact is, we had four dead Americans. What difference at this point does it make? If you got a business, you didn't build that. Oh, welcome to the face. Welcome to the face of the new democracy. Don't expect just to get a mistake. We're paying off the lecture. Keep on doing what you do, Rick. You're my favorite host, favorite host, favorite host. It's time to hear the truth about America's biggest challenges. You're listening to America Off the Rails with your host, Rick Robinson. Well, all right, all right, all right. Hey, good evening, everybody. This is America Off the Rails. I'm your host, Rick Robinson, and it's just a few minutes past the hour of 10 right here, uh, well, Eastern Time, Central, where I live in beautiful Oklahoma, uh, the land of the flat. Uh, the new home of the Libertarian Movement. Uh, for those of you who may not know, the Libertarian Party is now on the ballot for the first time in a very long time. So those of us who are Libertarian are trying to do everything that we can to keep that and make sure that it continues to remain on the ballot so Oklahoma can continue to have a choice. We'll have some more local shows coming up about that here in the near future. Going to start having some of the Libertarian candidates that are running uh, locally more on. Also, we are going to... Uh, start talking about ways that those of you even outside of Oklahoma, if you are a fan of liberty and a fan of giving people more choices and options when it comes to elections, so you're not looking at what we're looking at now, which is uh, Obama in a pantsuit and Obama with horrible hair, and I'll let you figure out which one's which, um, then now is your time to start finding ways to get involved. I am going to be taking the show a little bit more locally for some of that reason, I have some announcements to make today that some of you may not like very much. I will be beginning to step down some of the uh, national syndication that we do for the short term for several reasons. I've been asked to take on a couple of projects that are going to be time consuming. And also with the launch of Red Nation Rising Radio, I want to make sure that a good portion of my attention is available for those folks because they have been kind enough to pick up a lot of the network that I've put together and I want to make sure they get a good launch and that's effective. June 4th, uh, we also have a new affiliate coming on, or July 4th, sorry. We also have a new affiliate coming online around the same time, and I've been helping them get some things uh, squared away. We also have quite a few new shows hitting the lineup and more coming, so my plate has been really full. So you will notice that some of the places that we currently syndicate on will likely be coming to a close soon. I do want to thank everyone who's given me an opportunity to put my show where it's been for the last uh, about a year now. Uh, places like WNJC 1360 AM out of Philadelphia, as well as AMFM247.com. But at this point, and at this juncture, it's time for me to circle the wagons a bit, quit focusing so much quite on just my show, and keep doing what I can do to make not only K98 Talk, but all of the new affiliates that are picking up the programming that we're putting together the best they can possibly be. So I've had to make some decisions. Some of them have been a little hard. Um, but I think I'm making the best decisions possible for both the network, for myself, for our affiliates. And it, it's just time for me to, to cut back a little bit because I've been doing a lot of extra shows that are, then it's a lot more time consuming than you might think to even put together an hour of radio. And it was getting to the point where I was doing eight, nine, sometimes 10 hours of radio a week, depending on whether I was producing or live, uh, or even pre-recording, etc. And it, it, it's just too much. Um, I do have some things in the works to try to see about getting syndicated in some other places once the uh, libertarian push is more uh, underway. The issue is for me, I want to spend a lot of time more locally talking about that. And I don't think it's fair to send that out to uh, nationally syndicated platforms and be talking about Oklahoma politics because folks in Philadelphia really aren't going to care much about that. So... Just wanted to let everybody know there are going to be some changes. K98 Talk is still the home station. KLR, KLRN will be another uh, affiliate. We still are on SHR Media as well as soon to be Red Nation Rising Radio, the Justice Channel. So we have lots of places where we can still be heard. It's just at this point I've had to make some decisions to make sure that we don't continue uh, to get to the point where I'm completely overextended. Because trust me, folks. 
It may not seem like much from your perspective for those of you who just tune in every once in a while, but there's a lot of work that goes into this stuff. And I, it was really starting to suffer, and even I was starting to notice. So I had to make some decisions. All right, so I think I've talked enough about that. Let me take the, the producer slash general manager hat off, and let's get on with the show. I do have a few announcements to make about the show itself tonight. We have a lot to talk about. Uh, we haven't done one in a while, so we'll have a double shot of Hillary's server at the bottom of the hour. Uh, for those of you who haven't caught that before, you're in for a treat. Uh, it is a bit put together by Eric Williams of barbwiresatire.com where we poke fun at the pantsuit one. And everybody here knows what I'm talking about. Because un unlike all of these Trump folks that assume that just because I won't support Trump that I automatically am going to be supporting Hillary, uh, nothing could be further from the truth. I don't like her either. And I had this conversation again with someone today. Because it seems that no matter how hard I try, I can't seem to make people understand that just because I won't support him doesn't mean that I do support her. And at this point, and in this juncture, I have to be honest, in Oklahoma, to me, there's a much more important fight. Honestly, at this point, I'm not sure I care who the Republican nominee is. It's time for, for Oklahoma to have more options. It's time for Oklahoma to get broken out of this two-party stronghold and the simple fact of the matter is the only way that we can do that is by Oklahomans coming together. So I want to implore you the same thing that I've been talking about now for weeks off and on. If you are in Oklahoma and you do not like either of the main political party's choices, then please consider voting for Gary Johnson in the, in the general election. I say this for several reasons. Number one, it's a clear third-party alternative to the crazy people that we have up. And no, I don't agree with a lot of the things that he stands for. But if I'm going to have to hold my nose and vote for someone, I would much prefer to hold my nose and vote for someone and do something a little bit differently. Because up until now, we have had both the Einstein's definition of insanity and a Pavlovian response to our electoral system for quite some time. Everybody picks up the red or blue banner. They decide who they're going to vote for well in advance, no matter what, and that's who they're going to support. And then no matter what, that's who they support. And then they're continually upset with the decisions and the candidates and how we got from point A to point B now all the way over to point Z. And this was not the person that I wanted to vote for, but I'm going to hold my nose and vote for him anyway because he's still part of my party. Look, folks, that, that's, that's the mindset that we need to get away from. We keep falling into their trap. They, they understand that no matter what, as long as they put up a Democrat and a Republican, there are going to be a set number of people that vote D and vote R no matter what, and that's where we continue to fall into problems. And that's how they are exploiting us in this election cycle. It is so blatantly, patently obvious, if you're paying attention, that this has been the biggest hoax perpetrated on the American people. Donald Trump is not a conservative for anyone. And I saw someone today, and I'm not going to name them, who called me out because I basically put out the article yesterday that talked about one of the reasons that it looks like he might not be so willing to share his tax returns is it turns out that while he talks very brazenly about the charitable work that he does uh, through his own personal wealth, his taxes may tell a different story. So I put that out yesterday and said, you know, it looks to me that maybe some of the reasons why he's refusing to uh, produce his taxes are coming to light. Because remember, folks, and we said this about three, four months ago, there was a lawsuit that Donald Trump filed because an author said he was a millionaire. Yeah, you heard me because he said he was a millionaire. So uh, Donald Trump took issue with this and decided to sue the guy because he said he talked bad about him in his book. So Donald Trump brings the guy to court. The judge says there's a really easy way to find out whether this guy has misspoken or, be, or besmirched your reputation. Please release your tax returns. Donald Trump, in a lawsuit that he filed, told the judge he was unwilling to, to release tax returns to prove that he was worth more than what the person who wrote the book or the, I think it was actually a, a book with a, kind of an amalgamation of stories and one of them was about Trump but in that the author pointed out that Trump's bottom line wasn't nearly what he passes it off to be 
And Donald Trump took him to court and lost because he refused to produce his tax returns. So you tell me, if you're going to take all of the time, the trouble, and the expense to take someone to court, and the judge says, all you have to do to prove to me that he's lying is show me your tax returns, and you say no, what would that tell you? Because I know what it tells me. It tells me either his bottom line is not nearly what he says it is, or he's one of these people that finds ways to get his bottom line on paper as low as it possibly can be to make sure that he pays the least amount of taxes. And I'm not going to fault him for that. But what I am going to say is if you're telling the IRS that you have one amount as your bottom line and you're telling the rest of the world that you have another every time you turn around, maybe you shouldn't complain when the IRS tries to audit you. And maybe you should produce your taxes so people can see exactly what it is that you say you're worth and see if those numbers match. Because if you're telling people one thing and you're actually worth another, I'm sorry, that's a lie. But there's another thing that is that is pretty evident, and this actually came out during the conversation yesterday that I had over this article that I, that I posted through Twitter. Somebody pointed out that they didn't really care whether he gave or he didn't give because that's not relevant. My point to that is, if you're saying that the fact that he may or may not have given what he said he gave is not relevant, then obviously you don't seem to have an issue with being uh, being lied to. I personally have a very big issue with being lied to, and it's one of the biggest problems that I've had with Donald Trump's campaign this entire time, and it's why I will continue to have issues with Donald Trump's campaign until such time as he actually proves to the American people that not only that he is who he says he is, but he's done the things that he said he's gonna, going to do, and he actually does them, because he's flip-flopped on everything that he's ever told you. All of them. So again, if you're in Oklahoma, we are a red state. I understand that we are a red state, but the simple fact of the matter is, if we want to get to the point where we have the ability to have more than two choices, then we have to meet a certain threshold. So if you, like me, cannot vote for either one of the two main party frontrunners, then I do please strongly recommend that you at least look at Gary Johnson and his running mate. Because between the two of them, they have more executive experience than either one of the other party frontrunners. And I may not agree with a lot of the things that they say, but I still have to look at that experience and say, look, at this point, could it possibly be any worse than what we've already done? Because as it stands right now, no matter whether Trump or Clinton get the White House, we have Obama 2.0. That is honestly where we are, and nobody wants to talk about it. Nobody wants to face it. Even Fox News is starting to figure out that they screwed up. But the, 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 the really bad thing about Fox News is they can't win for losing. Because when they were all Trump all the time, all of us that were anti-Trump were like, screw Fox News, done with them, never listening to them again, bunch of hacks, blah, 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 yada, yada, yada. Now they put out a poll. Yeah, actually Fox News put out a poll that basically says that I believe it was 51% of the Republicans Recently polled Republicans want anyone else but Trump as uh, the the GOP nominee. Sorry, the second on we're out of talk. You paid to talk, can't pull it off. All right, so anyway, so even now Fox News, a little bit too late in my opinion, is starting to understand maybe just how bad they've screwed the pooch. But the bad news is the damage is already done because at this point there's only one real way to stop Donald Trump from getting the nominee. And I'm afraid if we go that route, we're going to wind up disenfranchising more people than we save. The simple fact of the matter is there comes a time when you've got to buckle your seatbelt and hang on for the ride. I'm not there yet, and I'm not going to help push the thing over the cliff by voting for him. But I am going to say at this point, I don't really want to see any shenanigans at the Republican National Convention because it would make things even worse, in my opinion. And I understand there are all kinds of rules and there are all kinds of things that can be done and all kinds of procedural things that may wind up allowing delegates to revolt. I mean, I've seen counts where, where hundreds of delegates are like, there's no way I'm pulling the lever for this guy. Look, I don't know what's going to happen at that convention, but I will tell you the same thing I have told you all along. If we get to the point where we have f f clear nominees for all three main parties, then may the best candidates win. And if that's either Trump or Clinton, God help us. Because there's really no difference between the two. And I get called to task every time I say that, but I'm going to continue to say it. There is really no difference between the two. 
It really is just about that simple. I'm sorry if you don't like it, but it's a true statement. All right, so I think I've talked enough about Trump for tonight because that actually was not my intention uh, to spend the first part of the show talking about him. But it kind of leads into a few other things that were kind of quick, short topics that I wanted to touch on today. Uh, One of them uh, was during a recent visit to Canada after President Obama gave a speech there, the Canadian Parliament, Parliament began chanting four more years. Four more years. Four more years. Four more years. Okay, so luckily, Canada can't vote in American politics. Second of all, if you want him so bad, you can keep him. Just just, 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 just tell him he can't leave. We'll be fine. We'll get along just fine without him. We don't necessarily need him here. I mean, have you seen some of the things that he's been talking about and doing lately? You know, he's been wringing his hands again over the Orlando situation, trying to get everybody to realize just how big, mean, and nasty these terrible AR-15s are. You know, you see all these so-called assault rifles marching themselves down the street and randomly shooting people. At least that's what the Democrats want you to think. But it turns out that no matter how often they use the word AR-15 and try to make you think it's this big, evil, mean monster that can load itself, walk itself down the street, randomly jump up and down and pull the trigger, it turns out it takes a person to help those things happen. It's the part they don't want to talk about. Because, you know, they're, they're all about the gun control still, and now they're all up in arms over the Brexit situation. And there's just more and more and more and more and more, and it's just crazy. Uh, Everything that's going on right now just makes me understand exactly how crazy our political system is. It's just insane. All right, so speaking of how crazy our political system is, I guess since we are already getting pretty close to a break, let me go ahead and play a video that I found. Um, This is Hillary Clinton in response to the Benghazi report. This should be entertaining. Let's give it a listen. Well, first, the question, if you couldn't hear it, was about the um, uh, committee report on Benghazi that was released today. And I have said from the very beginning, nothing is more important than the safety and security of our diplomats and development officials who go into dangerous places around the world, uh, pursuing American values, interests, and our security. Uh, And I said this when I testified for 11 hours, uh, that no one has thought more about or lost more sleep over the lives that uh, uh, we lost, the four Americans, uh, which was devastating. Um, And we owe it. We owe it to those brave Americans to make sure that we learn the right lessons uh, from this tragedy. Uh, That's why I immediately put together an independent committee to go everywhere, look everywhere, come up with what recommendations uh, would help us prevent uh, such tragedies in the future. And that, of course, uh, should be the goal. I understand that um, after more than two years and seven million dollars spent by uh, the Benghazi committee out of taxpayer funds, uh, it had to today report it had found nothing, nothing to contradict uh, the conclusions of the Independent Accountability Board or the conclusions of the prior multiple earlier investigations carried out on a bipartisan basis in the Congress. So while this unfortunately took on a partisan uh, tinge, um, I want us to stay focused on what I've always wanted us to stay focused on, and that is the important work of diplomacy and development. Um, That's especially true in dangerous places. We cannot withdraw or retreat from the world. Uh, America needs a presence for a lot of reasons, and the best way to honor the commitment and sacrifice of those we lost is to redouble our efforts to provide the resources and support uh, that our diplomats and our development experts uh, deserve. Uh, So uh, I'll leave it to others to characterize uh, this uh, report, but I think it's pretty clear uh, it's time to move on. Thank you all very much. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got the the audio from MSNBC, so sue me. But, you know, you guys already know that I watch as many news sources as possible to try to find the information that I'm going to bring to you. It's one of the reasons why I try to be as fair and balanced as possible, not to steal Fox's supposed tagline. Although I think they kind of lost out on the fair and balanced approach when they went full on Trump. But it seems like maybe, just maybe, they're trying to get back to that. I honestly could tell you at this point. I guess we'll have to wait and see. But it is interesting that her final thought on all of that was, okay, it's over, done, it's time to move on. All right, so, you know, look, the thing with the report is if you look through the report, and, and you can, you can find it, the majority of the blame gets laid back exactly where I told you it was going to get laid back to, at the feet of President Obama. I don't necessarily disagree with that, and it's the same thing that I've told you all along. I understand that she was the head of the Secretary of State, but the simple fact of the matter is, He was the guy in charge of it all, so if there was a fumble, it needs to go back to him. It's no different than when Truman said the buck stops here. It doesn't really matter how bad the people underneath you screw up when you're the one that's ultimately responsible. I know this, and so do a lot of you from being in management positions. If somebody that you are in charge of does something completely stupid and you don't do anything to fix it, ultimately, yes, they may lose their job over it, what she did, well, that that's why that's honestly why they got rid of her, but that's not why they told her they got rid of her. Because they were still hoping that everybody was gonna bite on the video. But still ultimately, even if that person loses their job or you take whatever punitive actions you need to, ultimately the blame still lies with you. Now I'm not saying there's not more than enough blame to go around, and as far as I'm concerned, the entire administration should be brought up on murder charges, and I've said that more than once. The simple fact of the matter is there are story after story after story of people in the the command theaters in that area that wanted to help, and they were told no. They were given stand-down orders, and when one uh, one theater commander actually blatantly was going to ignore that stand-down order and was relieved by a junior officer and the stand-down was carried out. Now, this is the point that nobody talks about with Benghazi, and I'm going to bring it up one more time because it's been a while since we've talked about it. One of those men that died as a hero was standing on a rooftop using a laser designator to target infantry, militia, whatever you want to call them, terrorists. He was actually painting targets with that laser designator. This is not something that you can go buy at Walmart that you go and you point at a chalkboard and you hit a button and the light comes on or you play around with it in the living room of your cat or crazy dog if you happen to have one of those because we do. We actually have a dog that chases them. Um, It's not one of those. It does not work. It does not engage unless there is a platform available that can act on the designations. That's the part that nobody wants to talk about with this, and it's the part that didn't come out in any of these investigations. The simple fact of the matter was there was a weapons platform somewhere in range for that designator to have worked, and that person risked his life knowing that he was painting active targets that were trying to kill him in hopes that that weapons platform would respond, and we left them there. Now, by God, I don't care who in the administration answers for this, but somebody needs to. And if it has to be President Obama, fine. If they just found enough, which from preliminary looking at that report, they found enough to lay the blame of Benghazi on the president, I want to know why they're not doing something about it. I've had it. These people died. They didn't deserve to die. They didn't deserve to die the way that they did. And the simple fact of the matter is, I still want to know why our ambassador was there in the first place And who told him to go there? Was it Obama? Was it Hillary? There are still questions that we don't know the answers to. I only had a chance to peruse the report a little bit today. Maybe I need to go through it in more detail. Maybe some of the questions that I'm kind of going through in my head right now out loud have already been answered. And I will find out before tomorrow's show because I'm sure Jen will probably want to talk about this a little bit on tomorrow's Jen and Rick show. But at the same time... I still have to ask myself, what kind of world do we live in where now someone who was brought up on charges can look at everyone that was involved in those charges and say, okay, folks, time to move on. You've had your witch hunt. And you know, I've seen it called that over and over and over again by the folks on the left. Maybe if she didn't act like the Wicked Witch of the West, we wouldn't treat her like the Wicked Witch of the West. Oh, I'm sorry. Did I say that out loud? 
All right. So anyway, I think I've vented enough on this particular topic. It's about time for us to to, uh, to pay a, a few bills, take a little bit of a break, give me a chance to wind down. And when we come back, I actually did misspeak. I thought I had enough put together to do a double shot of Hillary's server, but it looks like we only have the one set. Either that or I can't find one of the emails that he sent me. So when we come back, we are going to do Hillary's server because it's been a while since we've done one, and I need to take a bit of a wind down break, and then we have lots more still to talk about. We have the Istanbul situation, and we also have a couple other things still on tap. All right, so when we come back, as soon as the computer finishes queuing up the bumper here, we will actually start off the bottom of the hour with the Hillary server bit, so make sure you stay tuned for that, and still lots more show left. This is America Off the Rails. I'm here with host Rick Robinson. We'll be right back here in just a couple of minutes. This is Slickery Trigger for Rebel Road Tactical. With proper care and feeding, your pistol will be ready when you need it. There to save your life. Shouldn't your gear be that good? Whether you need a holster for comfortable, everyday carry, or a tough-as-nails holster for your next training course, Rebel Road Tactical has what you need. Check us out on the web at rebelroadtactical.com. individuals and businesses with tax problems listen carefully do you feel like you're losing control over your finances if you owe over ten thousand dollars in back taxes or have unfiled tax returns we can help you take back control the irs is the largest and most aggressive collection agency in the world and they can seize your bank account garnish your paycheck close your business and file criminal charges take control of your tax problems now by calling the experts at tax mediation services and take advantage of the fresh start program and new laws that may allow us to negotiate a settlement for the lowest amount possible. Our team of tax attorneys and enrolled agents can stop collections and get you protected so you can take control of your financial future. Tax Mediation Services is accredited by the Better Business Bureau. Call now for a free case review and a price protection guaranteed quote. Call Tax Mediation Services now at 800-610-9050. That's 800-610-9050. 800-610-9050. Think fast. In the short time it takes to listen to this message, a small flame can turn into a big fire. Several minutes more, and thick, poisonous smoke may have filled your lungs and reduced your ability to respond. Give it five, and your entire home may be filled with flames. Keep breathing. We've got you. Don't let your world go up in smoke. Have working smoke alarms and always stay in the kitchen when cooking at high temperatures. Learn more at usfa.fema.gov, because fire is everyone's fight. You're listening to the Spark Radio Network, radio like you've never heard before. Innovation, creativity, and imagination are all said to begin with a spark. So fasten your seatbelt and take the ride of your life and listen for the spark. Is debt beating you down? You need discipline. You need the Debt Ninja. If you've been caught in a financial trap and need to be set free, then you need The Debt Ninja. Want to stop those harassing collection calls? Start saving thousands in interest and fees and get out of debt fast? Then you need to call The Debt Ninja. The Debt Ninja will find the best companies across the country that will help you consolidate all your bills into one easy payment. Reduce your payments by 30 to 50% 
and get you out of debt fast. If you have unsecured debt of $10,000 or more, such as credit cards, loans, or medical bills, call the Debt Ninja for a free 15-minute consultation. Call 800-826-1246. 800-826-1246. That's 800-826-1246. Call today. The Debt Ninja. got mail all right folks you know what that sound means it's time for a day in the life of hillary server she's a very slinky girl This is a uh, server. Where have you been, man? I have been trying to get a hold of you. I have shot you emails. I've I've sent up smoke signals. Come on, man. You 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 know how hard it is for me to send you this stuff, and how much I'm risking by doing it. And and I tried to send you this stuff on the 27th, and you didn't ever answer me. So I'm emailing you now again on the 28th, and now you're and you just you're just you're just. You're just not doing anything at all, and and now you're still not answering me. So I'm hoping you're gonna do the show on by at least the 29th, and 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 use this gold that I'm giving you. But you have to realize that some of it's a little bit outdated now because I sent you some of the stuff that was important about the 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 results of of of, of the Benghazi stuff, and now you're talking about it a day late. What good does it... See, 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 remember when I told you I was going to WikiLinks? This is why. Because you're a slacker. All right, so anyway, here's the stuff, man. I'm going to do everything I can to get you some more stuff. But if you keep being so late with this, I just may not even bother anymore, man. I'm, I'm going to go defrag my hard drive or something. All right, folks, so here we go. HDRClintonMail.com to Uma. Subject, deposition tomorrow. And remember, these were dated for the 27th because I'm a slacker and I didn't do them when the server wanted me to. Hi, honey. Just want to get our facts straight about your questioning by Judicial Watch. I hate those pigs. No matter the question, remember that you don't remember anything. This is our best defense. Yes, I'm giving you permission to be a bimbo. Tomorrow, but just for tomorrow. You can pull it off. Just smile a lot. It's what I do. <laughs> Pretend you don't understand the basics of computers, smartphones, servers, emails, or telling the truth. You'll be fine. Remember, it's just like I do. Make me look good, babe. Hillary. From HDRClintonMail.com to Robbie Moog. Subject, latest hit piece. Rob, nice job you're doing out there discrediting that new book by the Secret Service agent who was stationed outside the Oval Office during the 90s. You know, you know what struck me last night about this, this though? The Secret Service agent is the 4,245th person to come out publicly saying Bill and I are despicable, disgusting people, and every single one of them has been wrong. Made-up stories where political operatives or made-up stories where political operative members of the right-wing conspiracy or just were not credible people. Not a single one was right. Isn't that bizarre? I feel so blessed to be so perfect and to have never done anything wrong. Too bad everybody can't be as pure as me. Thanks, Hill. P. 
P.S. I saw one interview where you described the latest guy's book as trash for cash. You might want to change that for future interviews because trash for cash is ironically a perfect description of me. Ha <laughs> ha. From HDRClintonMail.com to Cecil Richards, Planned Parenthood, subject, victory. Hi, Cece. I'm so happy about the Supreme Court's ruling today that will allow Planned Parenthood to continue killing babies unabated. That Texas restriction law was so stupid, I also wanted to tell you that I received an email from Satan this afternoon, expressing how thrilled he is with both of us. He said it chills his heart to see pro-abortion activists cheering and jumping up and down at hearing the court's verdict. He also said that with people as evil as us, there was not as much work for him to do these days. LOL, you should feel proud. Keep up, keep up the bloody work. Hillary. She's a very sleazy girl. Hillary Clinton. Sorry, I can't help it. Every time I hear that bit of the song, that's kind of a double entendre where Al, and yes, I mean, too cynic Al, if you're not following on Twitter, you should be, um, yells out, blow Billy, and he's actually, ironically, I guess, supposed to be talking to the saxophone player, but everybody knows what Monica did, so it just it's just really hilarious. I'm not sure if it was intended that way or not, but knowing both Eric Williams of barbwiresatire.com and Al, I'm pretty sure it, that was exactly how it was intended. want to thank everybody who tunes in every week for that segment. That segment has been a lot of fun. I was going back through looking at these. I didn't realize we had been doing that for this long. We have been doing that segment now for months. It seems like it's only been a couple of weeks. And every time I turn around, he's got even more material. The guy is great. If you're not checking out his website, you need to. Again, that is barbwiresatire.com. And no, just for the record, he doesn't pay me to say anything. We have a mutual agreement where he sends me stuff. We use it. And because of that, we give him shout outs. Because, you know, there are just certain things you don't want to have to pay for. And to get your name out there, really, in my opinion, is not something that you should have to pay for, especially when you've got really good top-notch stuff. And that website is a blast. I go there pretty much every other day. Would go there every day, but sometimes I can't have stuff like that pulled up at work. Just saying. All right. So before we went to break, we were talking about the other things that we still had on the list to get to for today. And we are, believe it or not, already starting to run out of time. So I do want to make sure that we get to the couple other things um, that I wanted to make sure that we bring up. Now, I do have a bit of a public service announcement that's going to run for about two minutes. I didn't know if you guys were aware of this, but we are actually coming up to the anniversary of In God We Trust becoming our uh, our motto. So I have a bit of a commercial about that. I thought it was also relevant with some of the things that have gone on the news with the recent shootings and the, the world going mad and people deciding that babies aren't children until they're born, etc., this just kind of struck a chord with me, so we're going to play this real quick. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands. One nation. One nation. One nation. Under God. America has a rich history of faith. Without God, there is a coarsening of the society. We were born with Judeo-Christian beliefs. The belief that the rights of man come not from the generosity of the state, but from the hand of God. If we ever forget that we're one nation under God, then we will be a nation gone under. We must protect religious liberties for all men. That's how we make sure that this country is not dismantled by those folks that want to completely eradicate God from our history and from our future. We're seeing things that were unimaginable right here in the Capitol, literally erasing the word God from the structures here. We need this kind of revival of people turning back to God. It's not a Republican or a Democrat thing. In God we trust. It's an American thing. Join us and publicly display this motto. 
in God, God we trust. Join thousands of Americans in the Million Window Campaign and declare our national motto, In God We Trust. It's our duty and responsibility to join together and unite. One of the best things people can do is realize they can make a difference. We are one nation under God. Go to InGodWeTrust.com today. Order your decal and display it proudly. Let's again write In God We Trust on our buildings, in our classrooms, to combat the anti-God dismantling of our nation. Say it and display it. In God We Trust. All right, folks, so in honor of the uh, coming anniversary of making In God We Trust our national motto, I thought it was important that we start playing that to let folks know of ways they can support reminding folks of what our motto actually is. And I understand it wasn't always the motto, and In God We Trust didn't used to be on the money, and it didn't used to be a part of the Pledge of Allegiance, and it was some vast right-wing conspiracy to fight the godless communist blah, 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 etc., etc., Look, if you look at where our country was back then compared to where it is now, look at all the things that happened in our streets. In the town that I just moved out of eight months ago, there were two murders. Uh, Well, one that I know was a murder. The other one was a dead body found in the street. Three, Three houses down from where I used to live, there's now a drug house. We now have millions of babies aborted every year But we have the folks, the gun control lobby folks, up in arms over 49 people that were gunned down. Look, I'm just as up in arms about it as you are, and there has to be a way to fix it. But let me tell you what the problem is with all of that. It's the same problem that they just faced in Istanbul. This is not a gun problem. This is a people problem. This is a problem with a religion that tells people that if you commit violence in my name and it costs you your life, I will reward you with 70 virgins. This is a problem. If you go back and you look at every single one of the terrorist acts that have happened under Obama's watch, which I think we're now sitting at seven, so basically one, every year that he's been in office, there has been a common theme for every single one of them, and that is this person that that they used to talk to that was a cleric that had either communicated with some of them via email or through YouTube videos, was out in California, suddenly his little moniker escapes me. I think it's because my blood pressure just went through the roof because this topic enrages me because I am so tired of having my religion and my faith compared to this one and people telling me that we worship the same God whether we want to admit it or not when the simple fact of the matter is nothing could be further from the truth. My God doesn't tell me that I have to kill sinners. My God tells me to pray for sinners. You don't like being called a sinner by my faith? At least I'm not shooting you for it. I'm just, I'm done with it all, folks. I am so done. I am so over it. It just, it, it infuriates me. And I'm not ever going to tell you that every Muslim is at fault. Because that would be no different than me saying that just because the Westboro Baptist folks are complete nut jobs, now every single Christian must be a nut job. Look, I'm not going to judge anyone else for their faith. I'm going to judge them by their actions. And if you walk into an airport, whether it's here or in another country, with a suicide vest strapped on and you blow yourself up, then you're a terrorist. And what annoyed me about all of this, when all of it came out, there was all this, well, this is a mental health issue and we shouldn't be calling this person a terrorist and we shouldn't be doing that and it's bad to label these people. I didn't label these people. He labeled himself when he put a freaking suicide vest on. When they put suicide vests on and they yell out, well, Akbar, or I'm sorry, uh, Muhammad is a granola bar. You know, I mean, it's just, it, it just, it, 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 I'm just beside myself. Even trying to talk about this completely infuriates me because we have an entire group of people that won't even see what the problem is. Because the problem obviously has to be the gun. Never mind the Boston bombers, you know, the guys that use the pressure cookers. So are we going to ban assault pressure cookers next? What about the crazy lady that was hopped up on some sort of weird drug that drove into a bunch of people and committed a local act of terror here in Oklahoma a little while, uh, what was it, last year, year before, where she drove into the OSU parade? 
You know, I mean, that could technically be classified as an act of terror if they really wanted to try to do it. However, it was a white chick, so it was a different scenario. But at the same time, were we going to start banning cars next? Because, you know, people drunk drive all the time and they kill people. We don't blame the car or the alcohol. We blame the person. So why do we continue in violent situations like these to not blame the person? Look, maybe it is partly a mental health issue. But until we address the fact that there is a religion out there that blatantly tells you that you go to heaven if you kill people, that's a problem. Because as a Christian, that is abhorrent and it is completely different than what I believe. But it doesn't change the fact that we have some audio that I want to play real quick before we got to wind down the show about this particular incident. And this actually came from the Young Turks, believe it or not, but they were one of the better uh, commentary, commentary sources I could find about it. So we're going to go ahead and let that play for a couple minutes. Horrible attack, this time in Istanbul, Turkey. Uh, we appear to have several bombers who detonated explosives. Some say grenades were thrown. Uh, it is very recently, as I do this live, uh, that this attack happened for in the first 24 hours. Of course, there'll be a lot of confusion about uh, the exact numbers and the methods by which this attack was carried out. But either way, it was devastating. At least 28 dead, over 60 injured. This is one of the busiest airports in the world. It's the third busiest airport in Europe. It is the 11th busiest airport in the world. Uh, Ali Veshi had a very good quote about how it is in some ways the center of the world. Uh, I'll get to that in a second. But first... There is dramatic footage from the scene. I want to show you one of those videos. What you'll see here is someone taping a closed circuit television that uh, sh- saw one of the bombs going off. And then they'll rewind the tape and you'll see it again. So let's watch that first. All right, so there's no point in letting that continue to play. Okay, as so you can see, obviously it's, they're it, talking about a tape and you can't see the tape. But it was a pretty good opening commentary about what had begun to unfold there. And it goes on for quite a bit longer. But I just wanted to give you a little bit of a flavor of the commentary because the simple fact of the matter is we have a problem in this country. When we're no longer allowed to call out evil, we have a problem. And no, I'm not saying everyone who believes in Islam is evil. Again, that would be no different than stating that because the Westboro Baptist Church folks are obviously evil, every Christian is evil. I understand there has to be a difference. And I'm not going to be one of those guys anymore that lumps everybody together because I have talked to quite a few Muslims that are finally starting to find their voice and they're starting to stand up when the folks that do bad things in Allah's name are being dealt with on a regular basis. But truth still be told, the issue that I have with all of this, and I do mean all of it, is we can't call it out anymore. We can't even, I mean, we can't even, it's like Jen talked about last night. There was somebody that got called out because they wore a headband with a dream catcher on it because they weren't Native American. I just perused an article earlier where a kid was actually at the cops called on him for racist comments when he was talking about brownies that his mother had made. This is how out of touch with reality our entire country has gotten. And this is another throwback to the whole idea that has now become a prevalent idea that the government knows better what we need than we do. And it's now actually even starting to be portrayed more and more and talked about more and more by the Hollywood elite. A la Chris Rock, who said back when uh, Barack and Michelle were uh, elected around the same time the first time that the president and the first lady were basically our parents and we need to do what they tell us. Nothing could be further from the truth. These people are supposed to work for us, and it's time that they get reminded of that fact. The simple fact of the matter is, folks, it is time to do something different. Even I really thought that by building this network and getting involved in some political Facebook pages and turning uh, my attention to radio and trying to become a more prevalent voice and actually speaking out about the things that concern me, I really thought we could do something to wake up the Republican Party. The problem is, I think, the majority of the Republican Party is already dead. It has now been co-opted by a populist nationalist movement, 
And that's the last thing this country needs. And no matter what they tell you about Brexit, Brexit is not about nationalism. It's not about populism. It is about sovereignty. And it's the same thing that true conservatives are looking at every day. We want a smaller government. We want our own sovereignty. And those are the two biggest important things to us. Smaller government, sovereignty, adherence to the Bill of Rights. That's all we're looking for. It's not a difficult concept. But it is for the folks that want to find more and more ways to grab power from us. All right, folks, we are about out of time, so I need to make room for the next show that's coming up here in just a few minutes. We will have the uh, the Rhino Report right here on K98 Talk. I do hope that you guys will join us tomorrow evening for the Jen and Rick Show. I'll be back with you on that show on Thursday night right here on K98 Talk. And then, of course, we'll round out Friday night with, again, America Off the Rails. Um, and then I will be taking uh, Saturday off for the next couple of weeks. The wife's on vacation, so uh, there will not be any fine the common ground. We're seeing if we can wind up, wind, round up someone to produce for Bryce since he's had some time off and he's eager to get back in the chair for OpMat. Um, so hopefully you guys will still have that one. And then I will still be back with you again, of course, Monday night. And I know that a lot of you have reached out to me about American Action News. I am still trying to contribute over there, I promise. Things have just been so hectic. I have like three or four pieces that I have been working on that I will get almost completely done. Then something will come up and I'll have to change gears and then I'll come back. And by then I've already moved on to another one. So at some point over the next few days, I will start getting those things pumped out, get them sent over. And at least once I finally turn them in, I'll have about a month's worth of work done. All right. On that note, folks, we are out for the night. Again, I am Rick Robinson. You have been listening to America Off The Rails. And I will be back with you before you know it. Don't go away. You're listening to the Spark Radio Network, radio like you've never heard before. Innovation, creativity, and imagination are all said to begin with a spark. So fasten your seatbelt and take the ride of your life and listen for the spark. The leader in talk radio on the Internet, right here on K98talk.com. Is death beating you down? You need discipline. You need the Death Ninja. If you've been caught in a financial trap and need to be set free, then you need the Death Ninja. Want to stop those harassing collection calls? Start saving thousands in interest and fees and get out of debt fast? Then you need to call the Debt Ninja. The Debt Ninja will find the best companies across the country that will help you consolidate all your bills into one easy payment, reduce your payments by 30 to 50%, and get you out of debt fast. 
If you have unsecured debt of $10,000 or more, such as credit cards, loans, or medical bills, call the Debt Ninja for a free 15-minute consultation. Call 800-826-1246. 800-826-1246. That's 800-826-1246. Call today. The Debt Ninja. This is Slickery Trigger for Rebel Road Tactical. With proper care and feeding, your pistol will be ready when you need it. There to save your life. Shouldn't your gear be that good? Whether you need a holster for comfortable, everyday carry, or a tough-as-nails holster for your next training course, Rebel Road Tactical has what you need. Check us out on the web at rebelroadtactical.com. Tired of paying outrageous prices for Viagra? Well, we have great news for you. Now you can finally get Viagra at huge discounts. Healthy Man allows you to save up to $500 on Viagra. Why pay U.S. pharmacy prices of $15 per pill or more when you can get Viagra for less than $3 a pill? Call today and get 40 Viagra pills for only $99. This can cost as much as $600 at your local pharmacy. You can't afford not to call us. If you want Viagra at the lowest prices, never pay $15 a pill pharmacy prices again. Get Viagra for less than $3 a pill. Call 1-800-516-7602 today and save up to $500 and get 40 pills for just $99. Healthy Man is fast, easy, and affordable. Operators are waiting at 1-800-516-7602 to take your call right now. Call 1-800-516-7602. That's 1-800-516-7602. Again, 1-800-516-7602. In these uncertain economic times, you've got to do whatever you can to save money. One of our biggest expenses can be our cars, especially when unexpected repair bills hit. Not anymore. If you own a vehicle with less than 130,000 miles, is less than 12 years old, has a warranty about to expire, or even no warranty at all, you could stop paying for car repairs. Roadside assistance, towing, and rental coverage are all included. Don't wait for the next repair. Make one free call right now to see if you qualify. If your vehicle vehicle is less than 12 years old, has less than 130,000 miles, even if it's out of warranty, paying for car repairs can become a thing of the past. Call us right now and get your car protected before your next repair bill hits. Get protection and no more repair bills. Call 800-696-1030. Again, 800-696-1030. That's 800-696-1030. 800-696-1030. All right, folks, this is Rick Robinson with you. I want to tell you about some friends of mine from a company called Security Enforcement Specialists. When I ran my security agency for 12 years, I worked with one of these partners on a daily basis. He's been involved in this agency now, and with his other partner, they do have over 30 years of experience in the private security industry. If you own a business and you need someone to keep you or your customers or residents safe, then I highly recommend contacting Security Enforcement Specialists today. Give them a call at 405-703-1796. Again, that's 405-703-1796. Again, tell them Rick from K98 Talk sent you. Like I said, if you need the help, they are here for you. So make sure that you uh, go look them up, check them out, and see what they can do. The wrong way. Welcome to the Individuals and businesses with tax problems, listen carefully. Do you feel like you're losing control over your finances? If you owe over $10,000 in back taxes or have unfiled tax returns, we can help you take back control. The IRS is the largest and most aggressive collection agency in the world, and they can seize your bank account, garnish your paycheck, close your business, and file criminal charges. Take control of your tax problems now by calling the experts at Tax Mediation Services and take advantage of the Fresh Start program and new laws that may May allow us to negotiate a settlement for the lowest amount possible. Our team of tax attorneys and enrolled agents can stop collections and get you protected so you can take control of your financial future. Tax Mediation Services is accredited by the Better Business Bureau. Call now for a free case review and a price protection guaranteed quote. Call Tax Mediation Services now at 800-610-9050. That's 800-610-9050. 800-610-9050. Thank you. 
The Internet will never be the same. You're listening to K98talk.com.
the Kennedy thing. But $194 million. What I want to see, I want to see what his net worth was before becoming a U.S. senator. Right? That's what I'd want to see. And I'm sure if I dug around, I could probably find that. But I guarantee you, he's made a lot more than the $174,000 a year <laughs> that a U.S. senator makes. Do you know what a U.S. senator made in 1789? And... I know you can't answer me, so I'm going to answer it for you. Six dollars. Six bucks. A U.S. senator made six dollars a year in 1789. Far cry from what it is today. Actually, even in 1983. So you're going back 35, whatever it is, year years. $69,800 a year. Under 70 grand a year to be a U.S. senator. It shouldn't be a position you profit from. It should be a position you take because you want to represent the people. Because you've made your money. You were a business owner, a doctor, a lawyer, a professional. Maybe you fixed cars. Whatever it was, you did it after. It was your way of giving back. Maybe we should go back to the pay scale of 1789 and pay these people $6 a year. I bet we'd have a lot less corruption. I bet we would. You know, because their theory is always, well, you pay us more, we're less susceptible to taking money from donors. It's like, you know, we, we don't want to vote ourselves out of a job. You know, we're, we're here for you guys. Well, let's pay them six bucks a year. You know, that was actually the first year that they started paying representatives. <laughs> yeah, that was the first year. Before that, it was all volunteer. All volunteer. Unbelievable. All right, let's talk about, uh, let's talk about Benghazi, because that's, you know... It popped up again yesterday, and uh, Hillary Clinton says nothing to see here. Nothing to see. Move along. They found nothing new. It's time to move on, which is odd choice of words, seeing as how her number one donor is moveon.org, just by the by. Um, well, yeah, th- there's plenty plenty to see here, actually, but this is always kind of like the Hillary thing, right? N- n- nothing here. Just look away. Pay no attention to the server behind the curtain. Well... We found out you waited three hours to convene a meeting. Americans are under attack, and you waited three hours to convene a meeting. And it wasn't even like it was 4 o'clock in the morning. It was 7.30 at night. What was she doing, watching Jeopardy? What was she doing? And we know your meeting focused on how to change the optics. Right? This is a video, a video that no one heard of. Even the ambassador did not know about this video. No one knew about it. But... The aides to Hillary Clinton, they all knew about it. Oh, here's something we can blame, right? So the focus was on the optics, not on saving lives. Now, we all thought that to begin with, but here's the proof. We found out this. So we also we also found out that we didn't need Libya's permission to defend our own consulate, right? They're saying, they were saying in this meeting per the notes in in this report that they were saying, well, we need Libya's permission to go in and defend. We do not. Even Leon Panetta stated we do not need Libya's permission to defend our own consulate. So we learned that you didn't care about that. And then we learned that you made the special response team in Spain wait 18 hours to respond. 18 hours. 18 hours for help. Could you imagine... If someone broke into your house and the police said, okay, hang in there, we'll be there in 18 hours. Just imagine that. And then you made them play dress up four times. They're sitting on a plane going in jeans and shorts and fatigues. Should they carry a weapon? Should they not carry a weapon? Well, what are you going to send them for? Are they going to hand out Girl Scout cookies? What are you sending them for if they're not going to carry a weapon? When the American people wanted answers, Hillary and her political aides instructed Susan Rice to lie five times on national TV. We learned that to be a fact. Right? This is like one of those episodes of, uh, what's that guy's name? You are not the father. <laughs> this, is, this is with Hillary. You are a liar. You are a liar. We learned you let four Americans die in Benghazi. And you did it for one reason and one reason alone. The re-election of President Obama. That's what this was all about. Now, the report didn't state whether or not the president was involved in any of this. Because the White House has deemed his location at that time 
to be something of an executive privilege and it's classified and we're not allowed to know where he was. I happen to think he was right there. There's a large meeting going on in his home. You don't think he's there? What else is he doing? Is he playing golf? I'm not fooled by this. When they say, when, when there would be culpability placed on the president, and they say we can't tell you where he was because it's classified, it's top secret. Now, you would think you could ask Hillary because she's great at telling people classified things and top secret things. But where was he? He was right there. I'm willing to bet he was sitting right there and they hashed this whole thing out. This was all about re-election. You help me, you fall on your sword for me, and I'm going to help you in 2016. Because she was the presumptive nominee since 2008. This was all played out ahead of time. And we're going to go into that when we come back. You're listening to the Rhino Report on CRN Digital Talk Radio. This report is brought to you by Bank of America, working with home and design experts Aaron and Ben Napier. With Independence Day around the corner, plan a party in full style but not full price. Here are tips to host a festive get-together on budget. We love hosting our friends on the 4th, but it gets so hot in the South. To keep beverages cool in the heat, we freeze colorful water balloons and stick them in a tub or a cooler. The balloons don't melt as fast as regular ice, and they look great, too. We get some of our party supplies, including beverages and lawn games, at grocery stores and wholesale clubs. And with our Bank America Cash Rewards credit card, we earn 2% cash back on those purchases. We can also earn 3% cash back on gas for the first $2,500 and combine grocery, wholesale club, and gas purchases each quarter and 1% on everything else. The cash back we earn adds up to more party fun. For more information, visit bankofamerica.com slash getcashback. CRN listeners, when you come to Southern California, stop by a great restaurant, the Dresden Restaurant at 1760 North Vermont Avenue in Hollywood. Enjoy great entertainment, like the music of the legendary Marty and Elaine at the world-famous Dresden Restaurant. The Dresden was a location for the making of the movie Swingers. Now you can swing with stars Marty and Elaine. Plus, enjoy great food, too, like French onion soup, artichoke hearts, and many other great appetizers. Seafood? There's salmon, shrimp scampi, New Zealand orange roughy, halibut, Lake Superior whitefish, and specialties like veal marsala, piccata, and parmigiana. Plus, we've got a great roast rack of lamb, chicken piccata, and cordon bleu, and pasta dishes, too. Steaks? Filet. New York. Chateaubriand for two. Much more, too, including pork chops, prime rib of beef, and an incredibly extra large cut of prime rib. It's the Dresden Restaurant, open for lunch Monday through Saturday and dinner Monday through Sunday. Check us out at 1760 North Vermont Avenue or call 323-665-4294. Here's an important announcement for prescription drug users. If you take Synthroid, Lipitor, Crestor, Nexium, or any other expensive prescription medication, we guarantee you're paying too much. A new program is now making these important drugs available at a fraction of the local pharmacy price. For example, 100 milligram Synthroid in your local pharmacy is about a dollar a pill. The exact same medication is about 30 cents a pill. You can save up to 70% on most of the top 200 drugs prescribed by U.S. physicians. Call right now and see if you qualify to get this special offer of a three-month supply of most of the top-selling prescription drugs for less than $100, plus shipping and handling. Call right now toll-free and start saving on medication for you and your family. Call now, 800-362-9337. 800-362-9337. That's 800-362-9337. Hey guys, welcome back to the Rhino Report. We're talking about this Benghazi report. And in the report, they don't specifically really blame President Obama, and that's because they don't have any information about where he was. That information was not disclosed to the investigators about his whereabouts. They're saying it was a privilege thing, and it's executive privilege, and no one has to know where he was. Let, let, let me ask you a question. If someone's holding court in your living room, do you think you'd be aware of it? This was going on in his house. It's in his house. How do you not know what's going on in your own house? Crazy. And you know there was a lot of yelling and screaming going on. Had to be. If Hillary's involved, probably throwing vases, punching people, yelling and screaming. 
making Uma Abedin hold her bags. <laughs> you know that this is all going on. But, no, we don't know where he was. But I believe that this was something of a blood pact. I believe the president knew all about it. Knew all about it. He loves the micro stuff, right? He loves the micro stuff. Doesn't want to address big issues like terrorism or ISIS. But the micro stuff is all over. Right? He's willing to go on TV and talk about the brackets for the NCAA tournament. I mean, so this stuff he gets into. I believe at the time, in September of 2012, this was a you help me, I help you in 2016 thing. You fall on your sword now, and I'll make sure that everything goes your way when you run for president. Maybe I'm a conspiracy theorist, but you start connecting the dots, and it starts making, you know, some sense. An ABC WAPO poll from September 7th to September 9th in 2012 shows Obama with a one-point lead over Mitt Romney. One point. That's WAPO. WAPO and ABC, totally in the tank for Democrats. A one-point lead. And this was following somewhat of a little surge for Romney. Okay? So... They do what they do. They send out Susan Rice on all the big requisite Sunday morning shows to talk about this video. And, you know, it's really, our, it's really our fault. It's our fault. We pissed off the Muslim world. And this is what happens when you piss them off. So, nothing about terrorism. Even a week later, the president is not mentioning terrorism on The View. Nothing. Doesn't mention it. Lo and behold, an AP poll... From 9.13 until 9.17. So this covers those interviews that Susan Rice did. Obama with a 15-point lead. Goes up from being up 1 to now up 15. In a much less favorable poll. Crazy, huh? Starts to make a little sense. Starts to make a little sense. All about the re-election. Now some people want to blame Hurricane Sandy. They want to say, okay, well, Romney was surging. By that point, Romney had already stopped surging. Now, Hurricane Sandy did not help. The hug from Chris Christie did not help. But I get why he did it. I would never, I, I'd never crucify him for that. He was helping the people of his state. And yes, this was a chance for President Obama to look presidential for once. Well, it was a chance for Mitt Romney, too. He could have showed up, <laughs> but he didn't. He didn't. But Hillary wants us to move on. Move on the same way we're supposed to move on from everything else in her history. Would you hire somebody with her resume? Would you? I wouldn't. I wouldn't touch that with a 10-foot pole. <laughs> Neither will, will, will Bill Clinton, but that's besides the point. She wants us to move on from Whitewater. Do you think the McDougals moved on from Whitewater? Cattle futures? She made more money in the history of cattle than anyone has ever made. Want us to move on from the trail of dead bodies that lead from Arkansas to Washington, D.C. and now Dobbs Ferry, New York? We're supposed to move on from deleted emails? Quid pro quo at the Clinton Foundation? Laureate College? That disappeared, didn't it? And what have you heard about Laureate College lately? Funneling money from the State Department right into Bill Clinton's pocket as the part-time chancellor. We're supposed to move on from private servers that compromised our safety. That Russia, China, and private hackers around the world have said they have gotten into, including Julian Assange. We're supposed to move on from the shenanigans at the White House Travel Office. Thought I forgot about that one? I didn't. We're supposed to move on from the war room set up to defame women who claim to be victims of her husband's sexual deviance? Just one more thing to move on from. My question is, where is the war room to protect the American people? Where's that war room? Nowhere to be found. It was about optics that night. It was about optics and getting the president reelected. It was all about politics. Where was the war room to save these people in Benghazi? didn't exist didn't exist it was a spin room not a war room war rooms only happen when you're trying to attack someone like a republican or let's say a secret service agent who writes a book about you that's when the war rooms pop up not when they actually have to fight for us then (laughs) mum's the word there 
Mum's the word there. You're on your own, folks. You're on your own. All right, when we come back, we're going to talk about Istanbul. We've got to talk about that and a bunch more stuff to get to. Hang in there. You're listening to the Rhino Report on CRN Digital Talk Radio. What are you going to do with your old car? You can try selling it. You could junk it. Or you could donate it to Heritage for the Blind. Your car will be towed away for free, and your donation is tax deductible. Just call 1-800-785-9618. Heritage for the Blind accepts cars, vans, trucks, and boats. It doesn't matter if if your vehicle runs or not, it will be towed away for free, and you'll be supporting those that need help. Heritage for the Blind is a nonprofit organization that helps the visually impaired live fuller lives. Call right now to donate your car, and as a special thank you for calling, you'll receive a free three-day vacation voucher to many exciting locations. Call Heritage for the Blind right now, 1-800-785-9618. Donating is easy, and your vehicle is towed away for free. Plus, you'll get a free vacation voucher. Call now, 1-800-785-9618. That's 1-800-785-9618. Hi, friends. This is Larry Manetti. Go to LarryManetti.com to get my book, Aloha Magnum. You'll read all about the wonderful guest stars like Carol Burnett, Elvis Presley, Frank Sinatra, and many, many more. Also, there is an episode guide and my favorite recipes that I really cook at home. I will include a free signed photo with every book. Get Aloha Magnum at LarryManetti.com. Order now. Aloha. The smartest way for you to get the lowest prices on your plane tickets, domestic or international, is to call SmartFares first or last, but you've got to call us before you book your plane tickets. Fly anywhere in the world, fly anywhere in the U.S., and SmartFares can save you up to 75% on your plane tickets. We have the lowest airline ticket prices on over 500 airlines, and you've got a great 12-hour free cancellation window. Plus, with our live agent help, you can always get fast help and fast answers. So on your next trip, maybe today, maybe tomorrow, how about right now? Pick up your phone and call SmartFares. Plus, save up to 75% on your plane reservation. So call right now. 800-915-2644. 800 800-915-2644. 800-915-2644. Hi, I'm Joan London. And if you're worried about your parent or a loved one living alone like I was, and you want reliable senior care information, then call A Place for Mom, the nation's largest senior living referral service. With one phone call, you'll get free information on assisted living, Alzheimer's care, nursing homes, even important financial information. It's a free service, so call now. Call now, 800-704-6182, 800-704-6182. So you've missed the health care deadline and don't have any form of health care? Liberty HealthShare has the answer. Liberty HealthShare offers an affordable health care option that allows Americans to enroll any time of the year. For those of you who have already enrolled but just aren't satisfied with what you've chosen, there's still hope. Liberty HealthShare allows Americans to control, manage, and direct their health care, yet still be in good standing with the Affordable Care Act. Members are exempt from the tax penalty and mandates imposed on individuals for not having health care insurance, thus giving you freedom from insurance. Liberty HealthShare empowers their members by giving them the ability to choose any doctor or hospital across the nation. Memberships are for individuals, couples, and families, offering a variety of options to best suit an individual's medical needs. If you're a freedom-loving American like myself, looking for contract-free health care, then this is for you. For more information on how to enroll at any time of the year, call 855-585-4237 or visit libertyhealthshare.org to request a free estimate. Do it today. All right, guys, welcome back to the Rhino Report. I am your host and your friend, the Rhino, this Wednesday, this warm Wednesday in New York. I don't like it. It's like 85 degrees here. (laughs) I want winter back. All right, we're talking about these war rooms that they set up, right? Always got a war room. We got a war room against the women who've accused Bill Clinton. They have tons of war rooms. The only war room she had set up here was the one to protect her and President Obama's public image 40 days before an election. That's the only war room that was set up. Everything else was expendable. Expendable. Including American lives. 
Remember just how expendable Hillary Clinton thinks you are when you go to the polls this November. If four were expendable, 350 million are expendable. It's all about power, it's all about control, and it's all about optics. That's what it's about. So don't move on, remember this. Because this is important. It doesn't have to be in the front of your memory. But it's got to be on the back burner. What if you were the one in Benghazi? What if your son, your daughter, were the ones defending themselves against terrorists in Benghazi? Think about that. Think about who you'd want in control. All right. Istanbul yesterday. Three suicide bombers. They walk into the international airport there with suicide vests on and AK-47 rifles. They engage with police before blowing themselves up. They've killed 41 people. As of right now, that number may go up. And over 140 people are injured. Now, the good news is, I think like 80% of those who were injured are actually out of the hospital now. All right? So that's good. Probably glass cuts, things like that. Um, So it's good that most of them are out of the hospital. Now, one of the things that really caught my attention here was one of the videos. Now, when these things happen... What they do is they find Shepard Smith, right? Fox News finds Shepard Smith. Wherever he is in the world, they're going to get him on TV in about eight minutes. Because he's really good at this. Now, putting politics aside, because I rarely agree with his opinion on politics, this is what he's good at. Shepard Smith is the breaking news guy. And he's actually fun to watch, even though the topics sometimes are not fun at all. But he's very, very good at it. And they had a video. Now, these videos you've been seeing... They're not off of the closed uh, security camera footage. What it is, is it was a reporter who was videotaping the footage that she had access to. So it's not actually a feed of, of the footage. So just so you know, it's like, a, it's like a, a camera filming a camera, is what it is. But that doesn't change what's on the video. One of them was really interesting. So the first one you see is you see the bomb explode outside near the baggage check area um, just a big flash of, of, of white light comes across the screen people turn they run the second video shows one of the attackers running around the corner holding his his AK-47 it looks like he's shot by police goes down the rifle goes flying out in front of him about 15 feet now he's down it looks like he gets shot again the way he kind of buckles the second time And then the cop goes to, I guess, make the arrest, because he's now unarmed, the perpetrator. And he sees that the guy is wearing an explosive device, whether it's a belt or a vest or whatever it is. And the cop takes off running, the perpetrator. And then you see the uh, the terrorist, uh, I guess, detonate the belt or the vest. His arm swings up in the air and he pulls something. And then about four seconds later, he's blown to smithereens. And I was a little surprised they showed this on TV, because we can't see things like this. We're not allowed to see things like that. But they cut the video off right when the guy's body parts are falling to the ground. That we can't see. Can't show a terrorist's body parts (laughs) falling to the ground. That's the best part of the video. It looks like from that one explosion, it doesn't look like anybody except the terrorist was injured there. They had all kind of saw, I'm sure the police officer was screaming and yelling as he was running. Um, There was nobody around him, at least in the immediate vicinity that you could see on the camera, that looks like they were injured there. So if the only casualty there was one dead terrorist, I'm okay with that. Totally okay with that. Now, U.S. airports are on edge today. JFK was actually evacuated earlier today. There was a suspicious package. It has since reopened. It was just someone's luggage. This is a very similar style attack to what we saw in Brussels in March, uh, the one that killed 32 people. Now, ISIS is the prime suspect here, of course. But Barack Hussein Obama would just like to remind you that this has nothing, nothing to do with Islam. Not a thing. Not a thing. See, me personally, I I found out all I need to know about Islam on 9-11. I was here, I saw it, I smelt it. That's all I need to know about it. But the president, the Islamic State of Iraq and Syria, not Islamic at all. 
not representative of Islam in any fashion. I think what would help is I think we should stop using the word ISIS. I think we should just say the Islamic State of Iraq and Syria. Now, if you look at, at statements from other countries, they always say the Islamic State, the Islamic State. They don't use the term ISIS, or, as in the case of our White House, ISIL. Now, ISIL is the Islamic State of Iraq and Levant. Now, Levant is an old term that refers to Israel. Isn't that interesting that our president chooses to use that term? That's a whole different show. That could be a whole different show. But, listen, Turkey, like Brussels, and France, they're NATO countries. These countries use the term Islamic State. If you don't name it, you don't have to fight it, right? Isn't that what, what we're kind of seeing here? What we've been seeing? The White House had one statement on this. One statement. It said, We remain steadfast in our support of Turkey, our NATO ally and partner, along with all of our friends and allies around the world as we continue to confront the threat of terrorism. That's what they said. People died, suicide bombers, ISIS, or the Islamic State of Iraq and Syria taking credit for it. Nothing. Porch light out, go to sleep. Nothing to see here again. Where have we heard that before? Huh? What's the president going to blame this on today? We need airport control? What do we need? It wasn't really guns that did this one. <laughs> I don't know. What's the plan? What's the plan? We have no plan. Countries across the world are chomping at the bit to go after the Islamic State. Because they actually care about their citizens. <laughs> not our president. Not our country. We're going to finish this up, and then I want to talk about some new polls that are out. Very important. You're listening to the Rhino Report on CRN Digital blood Talk Radio. It tends to run higher during the day and lower during nighttime sleep. However, many with high blood pressure don't exhibit this nighttime dip, a condition called non-dipping. More in today's AARP Health Tip after this. At Walgreens, getting diabetes testing supplies with Medicare Part B is a walk in the park. Really. Because getting what you need is quick and easy, giving you more time for other things. There's zero dollars out of pocket on all major brands like AccuCheck and Walgreens TrueMetrics, and no extra paperwork. So managing diabetes becomes a stroll down Easy Street, or a trip to the movies, or even a day at the beach. Talk to your pharmacist today. Walgreens at the corner of Happy and Healthy. Zero out of pocket costs when billed to Medicare and full coverage supplemental insurance. Non dipping is a major risk factor for stroke, heart attack, and kidney disease. But studies show taking one or more of your prescribed blood pressure medications just before bedtime significantly decreases the risk. Of course, never change the timing of your medications without first consulting your doctor. For more, go to AARP.org. So you've missed the health care deadline and don't have any form of health care? Liberty Health Share has the answer. Liberty HealthShare offers an affordable health care option that allows Americans to enroll any time of the year. For those of you who have already enrolled but just aren't satisfied with what you've chosen, there's still hope. Liberty HealthShare allows Americans to control, manage, and direct their health care, yet still be in good standing with the Affordable Care Act. Members are exempt from the tax penalty and mandates imposed on individuals for not having health care insurance, thus giving you freedom from insurance. Liberty HealthShare empowers their members by giving them the ability to choose any doctor or hospital across the nation. Memberships are for individuals, couples, and families, offering a variety of options to best suit an individual's medical needs. If you're a freedom-loving American like myself, looking for contract-free health care, then this is for you. For more information on how to enroll at any time of the year, call 855-585-4237 or visit libertyhealthshare.org to request a free estimate. Do it today. Hey guys, welcome back to the show. Just to finish up talking about this turkey stuff for today, and I'm sure we're going to be talking about it as we as we go forward here, because it, it's still it's very important. It's not here, but it's still very important. Like I said, these countries across the world, they are chomping at the bit to go after the Islamic State. Because they care about their citizens. They don't want to have their citizens get blown up while drinking coffee, or blown up in an airport. They don't want that. Our military, our military here, they are foaming at the mouth at the thought of going over there and kicking some sand up. They want to do it. 
And they're being told not to. Remember the no boots on the ground? Part of the reason why it's, they had to change in and out of clothes four times while sitting on a tarmac in Spain, that fast team that was going to go help those in Benghazi. No boots on the ground. No boots on the ground. Doesn't matter what lives are lost. It's all for the greater good of a, of a one world or a globalist government. It's all for the greater good. All right, let's talk about this new Q poll, Quinnipiac poll, taken from June 21st to June 27th. 1,610 registered voters. No breakdown of Democrats, Republicans, or Independents like we saw in that WAPO poll that polled 12% more Democrats. Um, this has a margin of error of plus or minus 2.4%. Head-to-head, you have Hillary at 42, Trump at 48, 18% undecided. Go figure. When you add in the law firm Johnson and Stein, that puts Hillary at 45. I'm sorry, 39. Trump at 37. Johnson at 8. Stein at 4. So Hillary drops down three. Trump drops down three. And then Johnson picks up eight. Still well short of the 15 he's going to need to be in a debate. And Stein. Um, actually, no one's ever heard of her before. If you look at this poll, like 95% of the people who were polled never heard of her. Um, you know, in on the June 1st release of this same poll, this Q poll, Hillary was at 45 and Trump was at 41. All right, so this goes from being a four-point gap for Hillary to now a two-point gap, a dead heat well within the margin of error. Women support Hillary by 17% at a margin of 50 to 33. Men support Trump by 13% at a margin of 47 to 34. White voters go Trump by 13%, 47-34 also. Black voters, they go to Hillary, 90% margin, 90 to 1. Or, I'm sorry, 91 to 1. I can do math. Hispanic voters go Hillary by 17. That's actually a much lower number than we've seen in the past. She was around 30 or 40% with the Hispanic community, now 17. Is it a one-off? I don't know. I don't know, but it's still showing 17. That's 50 to 33. She's up there. The 18 to 34 vote, that coveted vote that no one ever goes out and votes in that age range. Hillary's up 25 percent, uh, 48, 23. You go to the 50 to 64 though, boom, Trump's your man at 6 percent. He's up 45, 39. You're over 65 crowd, the ones who are going out, uh, you know, four o'clock for dinner. Trump wins them by 16 percent at 51, 35, and once again, once again. Independents choose Trump by 2%. We're seeing this in every single poll. Anywhere from 2 to 10% independents go Trump. Uh, 36, 34 in this particular one. Favorability. Trump at a 34 favorable and a 57 unfavorable. He's leveling off, if not going down just a little bit there. Hillary at a 37% favorable. 57% also unfavorable. She's going up, folks. She was at about 55% a couple weeks ago, uh, 52% before that. She's going up in the unfavorables, and it's not going to stop there after th- this report is going to hurt that unfavorable number come next week. Party support. Hillary gets 89% of Democrats and 3% of Republicans who hate who hate themselves. Trump gets 84% of Republicans. That is a, lo- a large number for Trump. Trump was hovering in the 76-75 area for Republican support, and he gets 6% of Democrats. So he gets, again, more crossover of Democrats. Not quite the number he probably thinks or thought he would get, but still, he does get more crossover voters in all of these polls, even the ones that are the most skewed. Voters believe that Hillary is more intelligent and better prepared to be president. That must have to do with corruption, because you have to be corrupt if you're going to be president. Also, voters think that Trump is more honest and trustworthy and would be a stronger leader. All right, this is all in this Q poll. Uh, By a margin of 52 to 40, uh, the voters think Trump would be a better job creator. By a margin of 50 to 45, the voters think Clinton would be better at handling immigration. That's close. That's close. Uh, By a margin of 52 to 39, Trump would be more effective at handling the Islamic State. Or they say ISIS here. And then you have um, 51 to 42, Clinton, the voters think she would be better at responding to international crisis. There's a lot of numbers here. Um, People with no college degree, no college degree, they go Trump, but not heavy. Not heavy. Uh, 4337. There's some not-so-terrible numbers here for Trump. 
Uh, compared to the last presidential election, what would you describe your level of interest to be or enthusiasm to be? I'm sorry. Uh, Republicans are way more enthusiastic. 38 are, are ex- more enthusiastic. 28% Democrats are more enthusiastic. Uh, independents, not enthusiastic at all. Uh, 48% are less enthusiastic than previous. <laughs> I said the word enthusiastic way too many times there. They are 17 pages to this poll. 17 pages. The economy is number one. Number one important issue. Immigration, number two. National security, number three. And income inequality, well, that's like number 20 here. Only 2% believe that income inequality is a big issue. And that happens to be Hillary Clinton's number one platform. Number one. Um, Are judges important? Well, only 2% think that judges are important this election. That would be your low information voter. Um, abortion, 1%. 1%. Only 1% think that's an important issue. Environment, 1%. Women's issues, 1%. All the things Hillary is running on, nobody cares about. <laughs> nobody cares about them. So, all right, we'll finish up talking about this poll when we come back. And we'll talk about should women be involved in the draft and what's Russia doing to our Navy? Hang in there, guys. You're listening to the Rhino Report on CRN Digital Talk Radio. You're experiencing pain, back pain, shoulder, elbow, or hand pain, pain from a sports injury. If so, schedule a visit with Dr. Michael Sheps, the leading expert in laser therapy for pain management. Call 310-873-4422 or go to drsheps.com. Experience Epic T, the breakthrough laser therapy system that Dr. Sheps developed to make you pain-free in less time. Laser therapy is a non-invasive, safe, and effective in-office procedure that penetrates deep into your skin without damaging the tissue. It perfectly targets areas of pain to promote fast, natural healing. Relax your muscles, ease muscle spasms, joint stiffness, and arthritis pain while increasing blood circulation. For over 25 years, Dr. Sheps has helped Olympic athletes and sports enthusiasts alike get back in the game. Schedule your visit with Dr. Sheps at his Brentwood office in California. Call 310-873-4422 or visit drsheps.com. That's drsheps.com. 310-873-4422. Trying to sell your old car? Instead, donate your vehicle to Heritage for the Blind. Pickup is free, and your donation is tax-deductible. Just call 1-800-785-9618. Heritage for the Blind accepts cars, vans, trucks, and boats, whether they run or not. Call right now and receive a free three-day vacation voucher to over 50 locations. Call 1-800-785-9618. Donate your car today. That's 1-800-785-9618. Let me take just a moment or two, if I may, and talk about a great place to eat. That's right. For you folks anywhere in the eastern San Fernando Valley, drop in to Bob's Big Boys. That's right. In Sun Valley at 8274 Sunland Boulevard. Now, everybody remembers the name Bob's. They're getting bigger and bigger every day. And little old Bob carrying the hamburger in his checkered overalls is the same Bob that you remember from back through the years. And, of course, if you want to go in for a great lunch, remember their classic burger, The original double-deck hamburger combination. Delicious 100% pure ground beef in two patties with American cheese, lettuce, and our famous big boy special sauce. The name is Bob, and I think when you go in, you'll say, by golly, I'm sure glad that I found this restaurant because it's good for breakfast, lunch, or dinner. They've got all kinds of things, and all you have to do is remember. Bob's Big Boy in Sun Valley at 8274 Sunland Boulevard. It's a great place to eat. Attention CRN listeners in Arizona. Now all of your mortgage needs can be handled by Advanced Capital Mortgage. Looking for a reverse mortgage, refinance, new purchase, or just to streamline your FHA and HARP? Our rates are great with dozens of lending solutions. Call Advanced Capital Mortgage, 855-437-8421. That's 855-437-8421. 855-437-8421. MBO 91903, MLS 716936. So you've missed the health care deadline and don't have any form of health care? Liberty HealthShare has the answer. Liberty HealthShare offers an affordable health care option that allows Americans to enroll any time of the year. For those of you who have already enrolled but just aren't satisfied with what you've chosen, there's still hope. Liberty HealthShare allows Americans to control, manage, and direct their health care, yet still be in good standing with the Affordable Care Act. Members are exempt from the tax penalty and mandates imposed on individuals for not having health care insurance, thus giving you freedom from insurance. Liberty HealthShare empowers their members by giving them the ability to choose any doctor or hospital across the nation. Memberships are for individuals, couples, and families. 
offering a variety of options to best suit an individual's medical needs. If you're a freedom-loving American like myself, looking for contract-free health care, then this is for you. For more information on how to enroll at any time of the year, call 855-585-4237 or visit libertyhealthshare.org to request a free estimate. Do it today. This is Jeff Carlisi from the Band 38 Special. Let us never forget that police lives matter. You're listening to the Rhino Report, always right on the RWB Network. The Republicans want to repeal it. You know, they actually, with a straight face, say that the Great Recession was was caused by too much regulation on Wall Street. They actually say that. You know, I remember when... You know, I, I've, been, I've supported my husband through all of his races in Arkansas. And I, I, one of my favorite, favorite political ads of all time was a radio ad in rural Arkansas where the announcer said, wouldn't it be great if somebody running for office said something, we could have an immediate reaction as to whether it was true or not? Well, we've trained this dog. And the dog... If it's not true, he's going to bark. And then the dog was barking on the, on the radio. And so, you know, people were, like, barking at each other for days after that. I, I'm trying to figure out how we could do that with the Republicans. You know, we need, we need to get that dog and follow, follow them around. And every time they say these things, like, oh, you know, the Great Recession was caused by too much regulation. Oh, 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 you know. I, I think we could, we could cut right through a lot of their... Uh, you know, their claims. All right, guys, welcome back to the last segment of today's Wednesday show. So what these polls are showing us, poll after poll, is showing us two things. Number one, the race is neck and neck, right? That's the way they're seeing it. Uh, the internal polling says something different, but we'll keep that aside for now. Um, the, the public polling shows a neck-and-neck neck race. Also, it's showing us that there is a tremendous, tremendous divide in this country because nobody's winning any of these demographics by 1% or 2%. They're all winning them by 16%, 20%, 90% in one case. Um, very, very divided. So, listen, it's fodder for us to talk about, and, and uh, we're looking for trends, and I do like trend spotting, so we'll look for trends, and I'll bring them to you as I find them. Let's talk about one USA Today reporter named Paul Singer who was embarrassed. He was completely embarrassed. Um, do you remember that day when the Democrats all sat around and, and did nothing? No, not every day. <laughs> I, I, I know that. But that one particular day where they had that sit-in with, with the gun control stuff. Well, apparently they started applauding all of the reporters that were in the press gallery because they were helping them spread the message. And this guy, Paul Singer, was like really embarrassed by it. He said, that don't, don't applaud me. Don't thank me. I'm here doing my job. You know, we should be the enemy. That's kind of what he says, that th- this is more of a symbiotic relationship where you don't like me, but you tell me stuff, and I write nice stuff about you. And uh, I guess most of these press figures were really, really embarrassed by it, and I don't blame them. I'd be embarrassed just to be a Democrat, but that's just me. Um, all right, women in the draft. Women in the draft. Hillary thinks that women should be in the draft, but a economist YouGov poll says, um, yeah, women don't think so. 41% of women think they should not have to sign up for selective service. Meanwhile, only 29% of men think that women shouldn't have to. So men want you to sign up, um, but women, uh, by a large margin, don't want to sign up. This is a recent poll, June 18th to June 20th. See, for me, uh, my opinion is I don't think we need a selective service if we take care of our military. If you take care of the, ter- care of the military and you, you pay them well financially and you take care of them their medical health, you will have a nice, robust military. People will actually want to join it, and you won't need the selective service. But, um, hey, listen, women are now allowed to to be in combat roles, and the Senate will be voting on whether or not they have to sign up for selective service. I think I'm almost out of my my selective service days. I guess we'll find out. But it was, like, one of the first things I did when I turned um, 18. Yeah, 18 years old. That was, it seems like 150 years ago. All right, uh, one more thing here. Russia, Russia has no respect for us. I mean, I don't know if it's us, because I think mano a mano, one of our destroyers takes out one of their ships, no problem. 
but they have no respect for our president. Well, what happened this time? The USS Gravely was just minding its own business in the eastern Mediterranean Sea, kind of chugging along there, doing its maneuvers, and a Russian boat just pulls up behind it and starts going back and forth across the stern. I'm not sure if it was trying to ride the wake. Was it tailgating? What was it doing? What was it doing? The guy in the USS Gravely is going, come on, go around, go around, no tailgating. But uh, yeah, President Mom Jeans, that's what this is all about. Putin just likes to, it's not even poking the bear. It's like poking the stuffed teddy bear because we're not going to do anything. You know, some people got on Chris Christie's case, and even Jeb Bush's case, for saying that they would they would enforce the no-fly zone. Hey, you know what? I bet Putin would kind of stop his antics if that was the case. You shoot one MiG out of the sky, and they stop, they stop screwing around with you. But we've seen this over the last couple of months. They're buzzing aircraft carriers, and they're tailgating us, they're riding the wake, who knows what else. They're probably mooning us, they're probably on the side of the boat mooning us. All sorts of funky stuff Russia's doing. But, hey, listen, um... It's, uh, that's it. He doesn't want to deal with it. The president wants to just ride out his last six or seven months here. And, uh, nothing to see here. Once again, move along. Move along. <laughs> All right, guys, that's it for today. As always, a huge thank you to those serving our country at home and abroad, and a huge thank you to those in the law enforcement community. Thank you for all you do. Thank you for all your hard work. We all depend on you. God bless all of you. God bless all of your families. And until tomorrow, same bat time, same bat channel, I'm the Rhino, and I'm out. You've been listening to the Rhino Report. Always right. Copyright 2016. For riders and public personalities, it's becoming increasingly important to have an online presence. This normally takes the form of a website and social media. However, things like a cluttered site or broken links can scare potential readers away. It's time to get a health check. Until the 30th of June, Black Wolf Editorial Services is offering a special good site health check package. Get a new bio for your site. Have the site navigation and general layout assessed. Get a review of your Twitter activities. Get an objective opinion about your public Facebook page. Find out what works well and what could potentially scare your readers away. And all this for $35. At the end of the day, the face we put online will be the one that most people will see. Let us help you put your best foot forward. Black Wolf Editorial Services, nurturing your writing into maturity. For full details and a list of other services, visit us at blackwolfeditorial.com. The Internet will never be the same. You're listening to K98talk.com. Whoa! Good God, y'all! What is it good for? Absolutely! Let's get started again! Having a place to go after school will make you a better student. Having an outlet to express yourself will make you a better artist. Having something to do together will make you a better family. At The Y, we're helping build better friends, listeners, writers, swimmers, scientists, and musicians one chance at a time. Get the gift of opportunity. Support The Y at ymca.net. The Y for a better us.